To win this Supercars Championship is tough, bloody tough. Oh, huge oh, blocks for Lowndes with big damage right front. That's very, very heavy contact for Lowndes. It takes dedication. Perfect score for Mark Winterbottom. Converted off the line and never looked back. You must have a great team behind you. Thank you. This is a home ground win. Much. Thank you, guys. Well done, James Courtney. And rely on a little bit of luck. Never comes easy. Oh, oh he's got, he got him! Lounge runs wide. This is a game changer. You have to survive the bad days. Oh, there's a touch. He's turned they both gone far. round. This is what they did not want to see at Red Bull. And always remain focused on the prize. Garth Tander. He is the winner for 2007 from Toll HSV. Because when you get that number one in your car, Jamie Winker, the best in the business. Can't thank you guys enough, thank you. He's now alongside the best of all time. You're looking at a modern day grade of this game. There's simply no better feeling. Frosty leaves his mark on his hometown and on the 2015 championship. A very, very worthy winner. We are close to a conclusion in the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship of 2016 and our destination this weekend, Sydney, New South Wales, a beautiful city to race. Around the harbour, the Harbour Bridge, the Opera House, the CBD, and then moving 15 kilometres to the west to Sydney Olympic Park, created for the 2000 Sydney Olympics. And this weekend, we will crown a champion to Shane Van Gisberg and the Fast Kiwi become our new Virgin Australia Supercars champion. That's the snapshot, 191 points from his teammate. Six-time champion, Jamie Wincup, does he add another crown to his already incredible achievements in this sport? 300 points available, 500 kilometres of racing to come. And this afternoon, 74 laps, 250 kilometres, and Van Gisbergen starts from the pole. A look at our location this weekend. And we're at Sydney Olympic Park, 3.4 kilometres on the Virgin Australia destination and departures board. And what a place to race. Our eighth and final visit at Sydney Olympic Park, a little over 3.4 kilometres, 13 turns, a very slow average speed, top speed of 250 kilometres an hour. But at this location, peak speed values do not matter because there's a whole variety of different track surfaces. There's huge kerbs. There's concrete walls all around the track. It's low on grip, it's high on bumps, it's tough on brakes, and it's very hard on drivers and machinery. And for the first time in 2016, the boys are running with the Dunlop soft tyre this weekend, and that's an unknown X for the balance of the afternoon. That's the snapshot. We've already reached our peak temperature of 25 degrees. There's a gentle northeasterly breeze blowing. We've got a little bit of cloud cover out there. It'll be a faster racetrack today than yesterday. It's a busy and tense scene down there on pit lane and on the starting grid. Crompo, I'm with some very important people here at the front of the grid. Firstly, Nuitali Nelms, Lord Mayor of Newcastle, where we are heading in 2017. Stuart Ayres, Minister for Trade, Tourism and Events here in New South Wales, and our CEO, James Warburton. This is mixed emotions for us, isn't it? We've had a great chapter at Olympic Park, but at the same time, we're looking forward. Oh, look, it's been extraordinary since 2009, Rusty being here at Sydney Olympic Park. Uh, it's always epic racing, and this weekend, I'm sure, we're going to turn on two massive races for our fans. Uh, but actually, we have such incredible support from the New South Wales Government, from Minister Ayres, Destination New South Wales, and we can't wait to get to Newcastle. And obviously, um, you know, such a great welcome up there from the fans, and more detail will come out shortly. Minister, we've been very proud. I mean, governments often and talk about ways to showcase Olympic precincts post the Games. We've been very proud to do that in our chapter here. Oh, Sydney Olympic Park's a benchmark for post-Olympic events and supercars have been right at the forefront of that. Fantastic five years. Now we move into a new, new era at Newcastle and how exciting is it? It's fantastic. 
Lord Mayor, we're excited because some of the things we've seen from the beautiful waterfront vistas and the where, where the track may potentially go, it sounds fantastic. It's very exciting for Newcastle. The track will go in a very historic part of Newcastle, abutted by our wonderful surfing beaches and our fantastic working harbour. So I encourage all motorsports fans to come to Newcastle next year. I'm sure they'll do that. Fantastic to see you guys here, but we've got a little championship to focus on for now. Thank you very much. Chris Pither, we've been talking about the end of an era for Sydney Olympic Park, and unfortunately it's the end of an era for Super Black Racing for yourself. No doubt you'll be looking forward to a, a good weekend here for yourself. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, with the news that uh, when we continue next year is obviously disappointing. So, um, yeah, all we can do is go out here this weekend and, and try and do a really good good job for, for everybody involved at Super Black Racing and obviously our partners, Icebreak, and, and everyone else on board. So I'm um, looking forward to the race here. It's going to be uh, hot out there, I think, but go out there and enjoy it. Is it an emotional weekend for you? Uh, it is. I'll, I'll be lying if I said it wasn't, you know, at, th at this point. Um, I'm uh, uh, nothing locked away for next season, so looking for a drive and, and hopefully we can pull something together. But obviously with it all sort of falling apart um, this late in the year, it's going to make that hard too. So uh, after uh, looking back, I guess, uh, after my first year in the championship, I, I'd really uh, hope that I can get that second and, and potentially third year to keep uh, progressing. I think there's been a few um, good glimpses there when we've really um, uh, done the, managed to do the job with the pole position and different things. I just need a bit more seat time, find that um, um, consistency. I think that will come with a bit more experience. We wish you all the best for this weekend. Good luck. Great, thank you. Well, doesn't time fly when you're having fun, mate? 50th event oh. this weekend. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> You still look so young to me, though. I know, I know. I'm just, I've got a bit grazed, though. I don't know what's happened there, but, uh, oh, yeah, 50 is pretty cool. It's um, good to be able to do it in this livery, to be honest. It's something, um, uh, McGuire Foundation is pretty close to my family and uh, pretty good to feel Monday to sort that out. So, um, yeah, I think it's quite fitting that you know, the, uh, my final round with the team is uh, my 50th. So, yeah, looking forward to it. It is, a, yeah, your final round with the LDM. I mean, it is a beautiful looking suit, mate. I think that's the, the pink very much suits you. Uh, not a bad result today, too. Um, 13th on the grid for this one. Um, we, I thought yesterday maybe you might have uh, been a little bit further up. Uh, how did Qual go? Uh, qualifying was good. We had the potential to be uh, in the 10, but unfortunately, uh, Andre made a little bit of a mistake into the turn two chicane and had to shortcut it. And then when he came out the other side, we met in the middle and uh, cost about two and a half, three tenths there. So the car's actually really good. It's been good on news tyres. So I'm looking forward to seeing what we can do in this little area. And it's just good to be, you know, back towards that front half of the grid. And you can see the lights, big bonus. And uh, car feels racing. And, you, you know, when there's marks on the doors from sliding up to the fence, it means it's quite comfortable to drive. It's not from being scared. So I'm loving it. Good on you, mate. Have fun. Cool. Thank you. He's been the form driver in recent races and he's done an absolutely perfect weekend so far. You're on the cusp, potentially, of something very special here. Are you thinking about that? Are you just <laughs> race by race? What are you doing here? I think so far is you keep part of that. We need to keep focused. Race coming up, we need a good start. A uh, good clean few, first few laps and see what happens with the strategy. But feeling good. Cars are fast, both of us and, and Craig are up front. So. Yeah, looking forward to a good afternoon. Pretty wild that the, the four key guys at the pointy end of the of the, the ladder are all together here, aren't you? Uh, it sums it up. It's um, pretty cool to be part of this end of the championship. We've had a great year and awesome racing with all the guys up here. So hopefully it carries on and, and looking forward to it. As your engineer for Shippy, for Grant McPherson as well too. This is an important time for him, isn't it? Big day for both of us, but um, it's not done yet. I know, mate. I know. You go and enjoy. Cheers. Fabian Coulthard, the first of the DGR team Penske drivers, sitting 11th on the grid. You guys probably would uh, like to be a little bit further up. It's been one of those years for you guys. I've sort of been watching closely, and it has had that inconsistency, hasn't it? I think the last half of the year has got a little bit better, but, um, you know, we certainly struggled through the middle part, but, you know, it's tough. You know, the strength of this car at the moment is on the hard tyre, and at the moment we're doing a lot of soft running. So we need to lift our game and really work on uh, what we're going to do in the off-season to make this car better on soft tyres. But... We're trying the best we can. Um, hopefully everyone still keeps the faith because, you know, one day this team will be a good thing. I'm sure it's going to be a very good thing. And obviously you've got a new teammate next year with Scott McLaughlin coming through, which will obviously bolster things with some information coming through. But um, with the soft tyre side of things, what, you know, it's just the tyre dig. You can't manage to hang on to the front or the rear of the car, mainly the rear. I feel like the car responds better on the hard tyre and, you know, we're really able to feel the changes and, and the difference from, you know, set-up to set-up. But, you know, the car feels a little bit numb, doesn't really... You know, give us the feedback we require as drivers to, to get the most out of it. But, you know, believe me, we're wringing its neck and trying to get this uh, co uh, this Falcon as far up the grid as we can. Yeah, there's plenty of strengths and, strengths and weaknesses in everybody's arsenal. I know, mate, uh, you're desperate to get towards the front. Good luck for the rest of the day. No worries. Thank you. Cheers.
Well, there's a lot at stake this afternoon, so let's stop and reflect on our facts and strategy inside the Hino Hub for the second last time for 2016. So first of all, let's understand a little bit of the background of coming to this location. Sydney Olympic Park now for the last time. It's our eighth and final visit to this magnificent venue that hosted the Olympics back in the year 2000. The guy that's converted to more race wins than any other driver is Jamie Wincup. Out of the last eight starts, it's five wins for J-Dub. And ironically, our championship protagonists, both Wincup and Van Gisbergen, were the fellas that did the winning here in 2015. So let's stop and have a look now at our race facts. 250k, 74 laps the journey. It'll be long, hot and hard this afternoon. We think on estimate around about 240 litres of United E85. Rules require a fuel drop of 140 litres. It doesn't fit into the tank. Usable fuel capacity for these cars, 110 litres. That means that you've got to stop at least twice to get the job done. Bit of conjecture around this number depends on who you talk to, which driver, what the atmospheric conditions are. But we're burning around about 3.1 litres per lap. Starting fuel, 106 odd litres. And depending Depending on how you burn it, we think the fuel range is in the vicinity of 34 to 36 laps. And the critical lap, which is the point where you fill up and get home, depending on all this, is around about lap number 38. Now, our considerations for today. This is the first time ever in our previous visits. We've always had the hard tyre first time ever for the soft tyre. We don't exactly know how it's going to behave because yesterday it was only two 40 minute practice sessions. Not a long time to assess the viability of the tyre. You can pretty much set your clock on the fact that we're going to see the Lexus RCF safety car this afternoon. This is the big question mark. How will those tyres behave? They are going to hurt around here, particularly towards the back end of the run. But because there'll be variation in tyre performance, there is the chance to pounce. You can undercut the other person that you're racing by getting those new tyres on a lap earlier and trying to put that new tyre advantage to a gain that gives you the undercut and the gain around the car that you're racing. And double stacking is always a consideration at this location. Thinking about fuel, we'll start with this one, fill to the end strategy. This is what happened in 2015 on the Sunday because it was a 250k race on the Saturday. Last year we had two 125s. So coming in early, topping up and running all the way to the critical lap for a top up, that's going to be about 38 or 39 or thereabouts and it'll get you home to the end. The next one that we need to keep an eye on is depending on the way those tyres behave, you might need to protect them and therefore run an even tyre strategy of two stops and three block stints on those tyres. They'll get an understanding of how the tyres behave in this first stint and you won't see much of this one which is to run longer in that first stint, top her up and then blow beyond the critical lap and top her up again and get to home. So, 74 laps. 250 kilometres. Will we see a new surname on the championship table at the end of this one today? It's going to be a heck of a race and there's a lot at stake. This race is stressful enough as, as it is. And Jason Bright, he had a cracked brake disc on the way round to the grid. So they've had to do uh, change brake discs and pad on the grid. And the boys have just had got that done and uh, he is ready to go for this race. I'm on road two with Craig Lowndes, the Triple Eight team. The Vortex crew have just topped it up the uh, the Esky with some dry ice. You've got the aircon happening, but you are in a fierce battle for third with Scotty McLaughlin beside you here, aren't you? Yeah, look, it is. I think it's one of those things that uh, obviously we've all been focused on the Red Bull one too, but uh, of course we're fighting for third. And we had a good qualifying, and then of course there's Scotty's popped up just in between us. So uh, it's going to be a great battle. Both cars are. Uh, um, a very been very competitive over over the practice sessions. We know that Scotty likes this place, so uh, we'll have to see what the next 74 laps play out like. What did Irish, your engineer, John McGregor, what's the, the message to you, given we've got 74 laps, 250 k's, how do you play this game this afternoon? Well, the first thing is to get a good start and obviously get away cleanly and, uh, you know, make sure that we sort of don't hinder any of these two guys in front of us, make sure they get away. Uh, and then, of course, you know, see where we end up, you know, whether we're in front or behind Scotty at the time, and then, of course, uh, from that, we'll obviously make our strategies. But, uh, you know, we want to make sure that we finish in front of him on the checkered flag at the other end of the race because, obviously, we need to, to extend that point gap. Enjoy. Thank you. Gautanda, the, uh, is the reality or the emotion of the situation now really happening for you, the fact that this is the, the last weekend for you at a Holden Racing Team? Oh, yeah, no, not really. Uh, still got this. A lot of racing to go yet, Murph. Five on the car. I know, but you're about <laughs> to get in the car for the second to last time. Yeah, yeah, no, we're just focused on this one, try and get a really strong result. We obviously qualified pretty strongly, so... Need to manage the car for the first half of the race, obviously understand the soft tyre around here and then um, see how long that'll go. And then um, 
all the guys up the front will be playing chess with their championships. So we'll see. And you won't be? Oh, well, we're not, we're not going to try and get in there and mix it all up. But if there's a result to be had, we'll go and try and get it. Go for it. Cheers. Dave Reynolds been excluded from qualifying this morning, starting from P25. What happened? Um, what, in the qualifying session, you mean? No, just for you being excluded. Oh, What's no, happened? Got excluded. Uh, I think they drove back to the other garage. They mistake the pit lane garage for the inside garage, and there's was, was a little interpretation of the rules difference, and, you know, we start 19 spots further back than we should have. You were obviously speeding qualifying. You were you were P7 before this exclusion, so yep. no doubt there's going to be speed in the car for this race, but it's going to be a tough afternoon. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very, very difficult from last, but, um, you know, I think we can make it up if we can finish in the top 10 or further up. Ecstatic. But, you know, there's a lot of work that has to go in before that strategy. You have to have a good, 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 car, uh, good performing car and you know, have to have a bit of luck as well. Tough, tough day for you, Dave. Well, it hasn't, hasn't finished yet. <laughs> let's, not, let's not be a Debbie Downer, but... Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to passing a few cars. Thanks, David. All no right, thank you. Now I'm going to... Wow, that's a very, very harsh penalty to have qualified seventh. Great qualifying performance and to be pushed to the back. So that's going to make it a very, very busy afternoon for David Reynolds. So the news just came through. I was only just sent a text by team manager Barry Ryan. I didn't even understand there'd been a penalty. So Park Fume is the area where the cars have got to go post session where they're under the control of the scrutineering group to make sure that they're not interfered with and that everything's ticked in legality terms at the completion of either a race or qualifying so the cars come out of the qualifying session and been released to the wrong location driven back by a mechanic he's been plucked out of seventh position here david reynolds in the penwright car and now placed rear of grid so that's going to be a very hot hard afternoon's work for him and when you qualify in the top 10 in a street race like this you're in with half a shot from where he is now big mission special message at the front of the gary rogers volvo this is the first of two week uh, two races as scotty mclaughlin says goodbye this weekend to uh, to a great team and you're in a heck of a fight here with craig Lowndes for third aren't you yeah it's awesome it's good to be battle, uh, battling with Lowndes. but yeah my last race for jerry or second last at the moment uh, so we'll try to get out on a high, but the car's been fantastic, so uh, we'll see how we go. I know it's been fast in practice. We've got a big 250 k's to come. What's it like as a race car? Yeah, we'll, we'll find out, Rusty. I think, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting this race. Obviously, those two are, you know, heavily entrenched in championship battles. So um, if I can do something about that and have a bit of fun with that, it'd be, it might be, a bit of, might be a good race for everyone. Well, no, you go and enjoy. Thanks. Cheers. That's the scene, Sydney Olympic Park, looking down around ANZ Stadium, the Sydney Olympic Park station. There's Jamie Wincup chasing a seventh championship victory. It's going to be a lot to talk about this afternoon. Wow, we're looking forward to it. And the last time that we raced here, Rick Kelly came home third. He's our GoPro hot lap man for the day. Welcome aboard the Nissan Altima, the singlet Nissan Altima for the final GoPro course preview of the year. Here we go, around the last corner of the Homebush circuit. Final time for us here. Excited to finish the year off on a high. Pretty cool track actually. Down the main straight, up to turn one. One of the biggest passing opportunities on this circuit. Back down the second gear. This year on the soft compound, we can use that curve just like you see. Back up the gears, up to turn two. Now approaching a very bumpy braking zone here into one of the most exciting parts of the track. Lots of curve usage. Back to second gear. Bang. Turn two. Turn three up over the curb, and then an awkward acceleration zone around turn four and up to the fastest corner on the track, turn five. Look at this concrete canyon. I don't want to tag that inside wall there. Again, up to a change of direction with plenty of curb use. Hit that one. There we go. Up against the concrete wall. Up to this concrete monster of a corner. Have a look. Back down to second gear. You do not want to mess that one up. Already taken a few cars this weekend. Again, up to a nice bumpy braking zone and a passing opportunity. One of the final ones of the lap. All the way back down to first, curve, first gear. Plenty of curb usage there. Bit of a squirt on the gas. Back around that corner. Quick shift to second. Again, up to fourth gear before braking back down to first gear for me. A lot of drivers actually lose second through this final part of the track. Difficult one to get the car through right. And then we're finishing off the lap with another curve strike. It's a really quite an old one. There you go. Welcome to my sauna, Evan Office, and the final GoPro course preview of 2016. Enjoy your weekend. 
Kelly in the singlet, Nissan Altima. He's qualified 10th for race number 28 this afternoon. That's the scene on the front row of the grid, Shane Van Gisbergen. Alongside him is Jamie Wincup. 74 laps, Mark. I raised the prospect in the discussion in the Hino Hub about tyre stress. We've not run a soft tyre here in these warm conditions ever in the seven-year history of this location. It's tough. It's going to be very tough. And guys tried to do some running, Neil, but we've only had two lots of 40-minute sessions. So the limited track running plus these hot conditions on a soft tyre, tough assignment. So our Cooper's Mild Ale starting grid rolling there before you at the moment. Van Gisbergen, Wincup, McLaughlin, Lowndes, then Tander, Courtney. Looking further afield to Reynolds and Winterbottom. Mostert and Rick Kelly, who I spoke of a few moments ago. Remember, by comparison to the way in which you left the drivers off the back of qualifying, because David Reynolds come out of the field and has gone to the rear of the grid, everybody shuffled up one. So if you're scratching your head based on where your favourite driver finished off the back of qualifying, Things have changed. Jason Bright, last weekend for him at Brad Jones Racing. Scott Pye, last weekend for him with Walkinshaw. Todd Kelly, problems yesterday with the transaxle, the back of that car, that was changed. Dale Wood, last weekend for him at Nissan Motorsport. He's off to Erebus. A lot of things going on in the field. Andre Heimgartner, Tim Blanchard will be back next year with a new deal with Brad Jones Racing. Shea Davies, David Reynolds, there he is. We spoke about him just prior to the start of the race. And Interesting that David was taking the glass half full approach. Yeah, OK, it's a tough deal. They are the rules. That's the way they're published. I've got to go to the back. Barry Ryan just sent me a note a moment ago. We've got a really good car, and that's important for them this afternoon. Isn't this a wonderful sight? We've been so proud to have raced at this venue home 16 years ago to the Sydney Olympics. It's a multi-billion dollar complex, aquatic centre, entertainment stadiums, a whole variety of incredible facilities and infrastructure, and we've been very proud in the supercars community to have raced and raced fiercely here for the last seven years. And we're going to continue to write more stories and add chapters to the story today and tomorrow. As always, every car with multiple cameras on board. This is Fabian Coulthard, Dick Johnson Racing Team Penske. Sharp colours on the car for this weekend. Craig Lowndes, we're on board with him. I mentioned earlier in the call today, Scopey, that yesterday his dad, Frank, who works on the Dunlop series as an official, had an opportunity for the first time in 20 years to go for a ride with his son, who is literally a hero of our business. He lasted in 1996, the year that <laughs> Greg Murphy and Craig Lowndes were the winners for the Holden Racing Team victory at Bathurst, and he loved every second of it when they had their rides in the late afternoon for promo. Here's Van Gisbergen. He's got the pole. Second time he's had one of those at Sydney Olympic Park. He's moved his career tally on to 16. He's in a huge battle for that 10,000 bucks for the Armour All Pole, but his eye is squarely on a championship run at the moment. Yes, it is, Crompo. And here he is. He lines up on pole position. The move for Shane Van Gisbergen to Triple Eight Race Engineering has allowed that young man to evolve and use every single one of his huge skill set to be in contention for this championship win. It is huge back in New Zealand. Absolutely every Kiwi is hoping that he can become the first guy since Jim Richards in 1991 to take out a supercar championship. I just spoke with Jamie Wincup's engineer David Couchy. His final words to him were, let's have fun, race hard. And that's exactly what Wincup intends to do. He didn't take our live request interview six times a champion, the greatest of all time, arguably. Don't for a moment think no, that this title is done. Warming up now. It is a key moment in the history of Australian motorsport. The Virgin Australia Supercars Championship of 2016 is moving to conclusion. This is the Coates Hire Sydney 500, race number 28 of the championship. We've raced for almost 6,000 kilometres, and it all gets down to this. And Wincup has made a blinder. So is McLaughlin. Lounds on the outside is quick. Van Gisbergen is going to be swamped at turn one. Three wide at turn one. Van Gisbergen's popped out in four. He has not made a good start. It's Wincup, then followed by Lowndes, his teammate McLaughlin. And now we've got Courtney up the inside of Van Gisbergen. It's a disastrous start for the Kiwi. Van Gisbergen caught wide. There's a little bump there on the way into the chicane. They're all off the road. Van Gisbergen's had to go through the chicane. He's popped out the back of Mark Winterbottom. In fact, he's gone. And there's a spin off the back of there. That's Chris Pither. But Mark Winterbottom is now in front of Van Gisbergen. And Shane's back to sixth position. Oh, didn't need that. 
awkward start for Van Gisbergen. Great start for both Wind Cup and Lowndes. Ripping start for McLaughlin. Turn 8 has been a car reader over the years. And now with damage to the left rear corner after that spin, Pither, who had a bad day yesterday, limps back to the lane. This battle for third position in the championship is now on. McLaughlin and Lowndes only separated by 21 points. Moffat gets down the inside of Fabian Coulthard at turn nine. And Wind Cup, what a beautiful start. Minimised the wheel spin, got away nicely, and so did Lowndes and McLaughlin. The two Greeks said it down there before at the start of the race. This is not done yet. Van Gisbergen has gone back to sixth. And the guy that wants another championship to add to the already pristine collection is Jamie Wincup. He leads the race. Lowndes stalks him. McLaughlin's right there as well. And a ripping start for Courtney in fourth. Here's your order. Wincup, Lowndes, McLaughlin, Courtney, Winterbottom, Van Giersbergen, Tander right up in behind Shane, Davison, Mostert, Waters. That's your top ten. Rick Kelly's 11th. Todd Kelly. And on the outside of him is Scott Pye. This is the run to that complex chicane, two, three, and four. Very easy to leap over the curbing at two and fly into the tyre barrier at four. Love this shot through five. And this has claimed a couple of cars over the years. ANZ Stadium in the background to the bus stop at turn six. And Win Cup leads at the moment by just over half a second from his teammate. But Courtney's flying. He's got a bit of fresh air around car number 22 at the moment as Pitha comes in. That'll be stationary for some time as they look at the left rear suspension on that car. Chopper replay. The Coates Hire Chopper Cam shows us what happens here. And focus on Van Gisbergen. He's immediately passed by Wind Cup. Now Scotty McLaughlin goes down the inside of him and lands it is up on the outside, who's making great ground on the racing line. A lot more grip out there. They kind of all bottlenecked a bit, and McLaughlin held them up slightly, but the slow departure, the slow corner exit speed for Van Gisbergen made him vulnerable down here in the run to two. Look for car number 97 to go straight ahead with the HRT car up the inside. He copped a whack. He actually got a whack there. He had to negotiate the tyre barriers and pop out the other side, so lucky he didn't get too much damage. On board now, HRT, third row. This is Courtney. Great start. Beautiful. Minimise the wheel spin. Now, look at all the drama down here. That's Shane right in the centre. Wincup moves over and covers. McLaughlin gets down the inside. Lounds around the outside. Now, what Neil said is exactly right. McLaughlin got hurt a little bit by the curve. That slowed his progress and allowed Courtney to do the crisscross. But what actually happened in behind was contact with Mostert and Mark Winterbottom. And Mark Winterbottom then ran into Van Gisbergen. So over on your right, you'll see the contact there. So this is now down into turn two. There's Courtney down the inside. That's the, the hit. Mostert caused that. Mostert banged into the back of the Green Falcon at Winterbottom land. And then that forced Van Gisbergen through the chicane. So it was very hectic. You don't need that when you're trying to win the championship. And I know that you've been talking about this throughout the weekend and in the lead up to it as Chris Pither gets tangled up at the rear of field in all the trouble that started back there. And look at that left rear corner of the ProDrive Falcon. The ice brake car is going to be stationary in the pit most likely for the majority of the race as a result of that. These are the sorts of things that happen on a place where there's high risk and consequences. So for Van Gisbergen, contact in the back of that car, that will have hurt the underbody, a little bit of the apron under the rear bumper of that car. All of those things add up to performance. And the guy that's chasing hardest in the championship battle at the moment is Wind Cup, and he's in front. Now, this is the view from Shane's car. The run to turn one, cold tyres. Jamie's moved across on him. Very dirty. Look at the swirl of the dust. That's McLaughlin. He gets checked up a little bit and delays getting the throttle back to 100%. Lowndes goes around the outside. We're riding with Shane. This is a run now to turn number two. There's Courtney. And then watch, there'll be a whack. And there it is. Then he has to negotiate the tyre barriers and pop out the other side and then integrate carefully, like closing a zip, without wearing another car or concrete. Here now, this go. has just happened as well. A little bit of aggro here between Waters and Mostert. They're team cars from ProDrive. The super cheap car and the Monster Energy car. Back live. The run to turn nine. Winterbottom, Van Gisbergen, Tander. Then Will Davison, who's been uncomfortable with his car this weekend, finds that it's got a very narrow sweet spot in the setup window, and he can't quite find it at the moment. Garth's got good pace now. 
He's putting a lot of pressure on Van Gisbergen. So the winners and losers. Lowndes up two spots. Courtney up two spots. Winterbottom up two spots. Van Gisbergen down five spots. Will Davison, good job, up four positions. On board now with Garth Tandit. The run down Australia Avenue, 250 kilometres an hour into a very tricky, bumpy braking area. All different surfaces. And he's right up in behind Van Gisbergen. This is the run out of turn one. Picked up a message that uh, I think it's bright in. It is confirmed in the pit lane. There is Team BOC car, and that's strategic. They've just brought him in because he's buried down the order. Try and give him clear air and a better tyre. They're spending way too much time in there at the moment. That was a delayed stop for Jason Bright, who's now made a clean departure. So very quick on the sector splits on this lap is Scott McLaughlin in position number three. And guys, the, uh, the ProDrive team are actually going to work on the triple one. They're going to try and get this repaired. What it has done, the bottom A-arm, the front clevis, has actually pulled itself out of the chassis. So they are going to have to replace the clevis. The bolts are still in there. They'll have to get those out to get uh, the triple one back on the track. He's had a horror weekend so far for old Chris Pither. And it is the final weekend for Superbuck Racing. So the team here going to action and trying to get that car back out on the track. The Red Bull Engineering Group held their breath and shook their head when those replays ran a moment ago. Now, Shane Van Gisbergen has not said anything about problems with that car. Yes, it struggled uh, off the line, but what they haven't done is get on the radio to him and, and try and get in his way. They've just let him settle and get on with the job. No, I don't think he's a guy that uh, is getting paid by the word out there at the moment, Van Gisbergen, so he's got his eyes down and uh, that's a disturbance at the start of the race, but not worthy of reacting to they just need him now to see whether or not he can make up a little bit of the margin on the racetrack and whether they can do something for him as a strategy player as now cam waters comes in at the northern end of the lane in the monster energy falcon been a winner here in the dunlop series in the past there's more trouble down here now again the curbs pitch the cars up into the tire barrier here and this is five and six big cross-up moment for michael caruso damage on that car yesterday after whacking the wall at turn eight and another mirror disappears. This time it's from Garth Panda's car on the driver's side of car number two. Back with our live pictures here as we focus on Shane Dan Gisbergen. Sandwiched between Mark Winterbottom and Garth Panda. Meantime, McLaughlin continues to show great speed in the Volvo. And he's 2.7 seconds from the lead. However, he's only a whisker away from Lowndes. And Tanda's having a bit of a crack here. And if he further displaces Van Gisbergen, that means that the battle pushes on into another day. Does look pacey, doesn't he? He's just flicked the lights on. He flashed the lights down Dawn Fraser Avenue. This is just around the train station on your right. Two final corners to finish the lap. And Tanda just needs to get a better run to put himself into a position to, to make that move. So wing cut has a 2.2 second lead over Lowndes, who's got a one second lead over McLaughlin. As you said before, McLaughlin's got very good pace. And the care factor for somebody like Garth Panda in yeah. Shane Van Gisbergen's championship is absolutely donut. Could not care less. And that's the way they all race. It's not a personal thing, it's the way they do business when you're in the cockpit of one of these cars. One of these cars. So he'll be doing everything he can, Garth Tanner, because remember, he's out of contract at the Holden Racing Team at the end of this weekend. He's looking for his next opportunity in the business, and the best way to generate those is with results and performance, and that's what he's trying to put together. They've pushed the tyres back there at six. Okay. In all the early lap push and shove, I just picked it up on the Coates Hire chopper cam. Looks to me like the tyre barrier's actually gone back a metre or two. Which is better, because you can actually straighten that chicane, this bus stop area, to right, left. And that runs up to the top of Dawn Fraser Avenue. There's the tyre bundle. It's been hit. It's been smashed this weekend so far. It's been hit about a dozen times. And this is the run down the end of the roller coaster of Dawn Fraser Avenue. This is right at the front of the Novotel. Here's Davy Reynolds. What a penalty that was. From seventh position on the grid to go to the back of the field for a Parc Ferme infringement. In fact, to me, that just, the penalty does not fit the crime in that world. And Dave who's fighting his way through the field, is currently 17th. So he's done a good job to come from the back. Now, this is what I was talking about with the apron beneath the rear bumper on these cars. And we used to talk about it being the diffuser behind the fuel cell on the car. 
uh, and the fuel cells move forward in the newer generation cars. But that does contribute to the overall aero balance of the car. And on Tim Slade's Freightliner Holden Commodore, it's been torn out. And I suspect that when we have a post-race look at the back of Shane Van Gisbergen's car, it won't be too handsome after wearing a supercar in the early laps of the race. He was lucky to get away with that. He was wide going into turn one, so there was contact at turn one. And then there was contact with the two Falcons that made nose to tail contact on the way into turn two, which that then pushed him into the middle of the chicane. And I keep saying it, this is a place that's so unforgiving. The consequences are huge. So a small mistake and real drama is attached to it. Now, this is a good point because Van Gisberg has made a lot of ground on Mark Winterbottom. Is there a problem with Mark Winterbottom? He just dropped a long way back. He was right up in behind the HRT car and now he's a long way back. Well, Gizzy has actually sprinted away a little from Garth as well, so it might be the way the tyre pressures have been set on Shane's car. It might be an anti-roll bar adjustment front and rear, or it might just be meeting the driver's eye, but whatever. Winterbottom's under a bit of pressure now from Van Gisberg, and having said that, Garth's just got straight back onto the back of the Red Bull car once again. But remember that if we have a situation where Van Gisbergen finishes in any of the top five spots, He's safely home regardless of what happens. If he's not, which is right where he sits at the moment in sixth position, it bats on until tomorrow. So he's got to go to bed tonight with his head on the pillow with more than 150 points margin over Jamie Winkup. Right now, that doesn't exist. Yeah, that would allow him to enjoy tomorrow and take the stress out of this championship battle. It's been an epic battle this year between two very, very competitive young men and the way that Van Gisbergen's applied himself as a real credit to his campaign this season. Rusty? Mark Winterbottom said to us earlier in the weekend, Scapey, that if there was an Achilles heel for him this season, it was car speed. And I just wanted into Pro Drive Racing Australia just to kind of question, Mark, what you asked a moment ago. Is there a problem for car number one? Chris O'Toole tells me no issue, but he kind of shook his head because the speed from Van Gisbergen, in his eyes, looks impressive. He's having a sniff down the inside at nine. The gap is narrowed, and he's turned around Winterbottom. Oh, Frosty didn't fully rotate. Now, he's got to be so careful for McPherson. He understands the risk of this. They're swamping Van Gisbergen. He's disappearing down the field at the moment, and the last thing the Kiwi needs is a penalty. So the gap diminished on the breaking run into turn nine. Now he's got all kinds of trouble. He's got Rick Kelly, Chaz Mostert, Nick Perkat. There are people all over him at the moment. And Van Gisbergen has gone down the order. Now, will he redress? What will he do here? Because the only way that he'll minimise the penalty is to duck back out. And Winterbottom's come in. So he can't redress based on that. So there's... A lot of damage on the left-hand front of that car. This is big in the championship battle that we've seen this w year. The man who won the championship on the streets of Sydney last year, Mark Winterbottom, has been yeah, turned just, just around. Stay, stay, stay. He's going to come around here, pull that bar forward. Come around here and help pull that bar forward. Drag and Gisbert will get a penalty for this. Yeah. It was a late okay, move. Then, we'll do some repairs. We'll just get it back on the lap. Put the tyre back on it, we'll get it, we need to keep it on the lead lap. We need to keep it on the lead lap. Just got a bit of panic going to stay on the lead lap. A lot of damage to the front of the bottle of Falcon. Okay, go, 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 go. As you can see, what we have to do. yeah, well. And so there's a point where you send it. Standard protocol in the business is don't drop the lap or you never get it back. So even if it's wounded, send it. So they've got it sorted out. Here's the replay. So down the inside on the shallow side, eventually Frosty's got to turn in. That was one of those awkward moments. That's where the damage occurred. Is there damage to the right-hand rear of Van Gisbergen's too? Because that hit quite hard. When he come by, here's the replay, so he gets no, down. Here we go. Car 97, pit lane car penalty 97. for car 97. Driving, Frenchman. A penalty for car 97, the race director, Tim Schenken has just called on the race management channel that there'll be a penalty as a result of this clumsy move. We can recover. Oh, and that, that's the point that I'm concerned about because when he ran over the wheel, there's Grant McPherson, his engineer. There's the penalty, the driving infringement. And the right-hand rear of Van Gisbergen's car is a question mark. Because that actually, when he drove away and they made contact and a secondary contact, 
That hurt the right rear of that car. This is, in terms of the championship, a huge moment for the young Kiwi. 191 point lead he come into this race with. Now watch this, this is the replay. He gets down the inside. He's not up far enough to command track position. Frosty has to turn in. They make contact, but now that spot there, when he runs over the car, has got to have hurt the right-hand rear of Shane's Commodore. So he tried to check up at the very last moment. All of a sudden, there was a, you could see that he tried to balk and avoid, but it was too late. The damage was done. Frosty has to turn the car, and there was no space down the inside. Here's the penalty for Van Gisbergen. The championship will run on until tomorrow. It is not done yet. Yeah, copy that, mate. We've got a really long race here. There's still 63 laps to go. Uh, we're going to run until the end of the tank here, and say, King Allen comes and uh, helps get us back into it. Okay. Long race. We can, uh, we can do this, all right? Winner of the Bathurst 12 hour. Winner of the European GT Championship. And I'm passing him and he jumped me down. My fault. Copy, all good. Focus, nice forward. Hey, you got someone on exit, mate. I just heard him go past. Sorry, I wasn't watching. Shane giving his side of the story. Chop me down. Just the back end of the message. They're the split second decisions that make or break a championship. He thought there was a moment. He took it didn't work out here it is again so this is from the camera at turn nine at the lower level he gets down to about the b pillar and then realizes he's got to get out of it because the gap's diminishing then trips over the left front of the falcon and the right rear of the holden commodore so mark's asking the question does that mean there's a wound on car number 97 and then ah further damage when he tried to get on with it for mark winterbottom then at turn 10 and that prompted him to come into the lane. It looks pretty second-hand down there. So it's actually firing the front splitter under that right tyre. So it's got aero damage as well, obviously impacting the aero performance of the car. But whenever you get any debris going under the tyre, it'll automatically lock. We might try and sneak in here and grab a quick word with Mark Dutton. He's just jumped on the radio again. Team manager here at Red Bull Racing Australia. It sounds as though Shane feels as though he was chopped at the end there. How do you see the, the penalty and, and what unfolded? Yeah, obviously uh, car, car one came across, but I, I don't think Shane was quite up to the beat. So I think it was millimetres in it. Uh, it looks like it was a fair call. Um, it, it's tough to know, you know, just watching a couple of replays, but uh, if he was another you know, two mil further forward, then, then, uh, then he was clear. But... Yeah, it looked like we just quite weren't there. Quickly, is 97, is car 97 OK? Yeah, car's fine, he's got good pace, so uh, it's a long race around here, a lot can happen. Thank you. Thank you. Team manager Mark Dutton, Red Bull Racing Australia, that Holden Commodore sounds like it's OK for this man, for Shane Van Gisbergen, but he's down the order after that pit lane drive-through penalty in 18, trying to make ground. Now, this is down at uh, turn nine. This is uh, correction turn one. And uh, he's trying to pass Shay Davies down here. So it's all going on for Shane's race this afternoon. The start was bad. The move on Mark Winterbottom didn't work out. He's now cleared Shay Davies after some hand gestures. Tough day at the office. Certainly has been a tough day at the office. And after qualifying superbly, Doing a, an unbelievable job in the armor qualifying session. Did two laps that were faster than anybody else. Made a bad start. Got caught at the first corner. Here's Rick Kelly being serviced. Right in behind his teammate, Michael Caruso. He's Will Davison. And then a bit of bump and grind at turn two, three, and four. And then ultimately contact with Mark Winterbottom. And turn nine, pit lane infringement, which in terms of his championship, is roughly a hundred point penalty based on the current positions. So Van Gisbergen, the way they're currently running, wing cup leading, and Van Gisbergen is way back in 14th position. Meantime, it's hot, heating up here for second, third and fourth as well. So there's a bit to talk about in this group, in this cluster of cars, Mark. So, Wincup has checked out. He's got a five-second margin over Craig Lowndes. 
but Lowndes, McLaughlin and Courtney, here we are riding with James as now Scotty peels off car number 33, the Wilson Security Volvos in for service. Trying to get an undercut benefit for car number 33 in the battle with Craig Lowndes and so I expect them to react to Triple Eight. They're all coming in a little earlier than I thought they would come in now. Uh, watching Shane Van Gisbergen, those couple of moves even then with Shay Davis, he doesn't seem as comfortable or as committed to make these moves. The one on uh, Mark uh, Winterbottom, he just seemed like he, he should have carried on with it. It looked like he didn't need to pull out, he was far enough up and then at the last second he bailed on it. Worried about obviously what, what, what might come, he just doesn't seem as committed to what we've seen Shane Van Gisbergen on these passes. What do you think? I, I totally agree, Greg. I mean, I, I thought with that pass, he's He's almost intimidated everybody all year, hasn't exactly he? Exactly right. That's, he is. He's been the intimidator. You're right. And and at the end of the day, when you've got that move made there, if he just gets up there a little bit further, it's actually Mark Winterbottom's problem. But he, man. Didn't, he didn't climb the curb. I totally agree. I, I, honestly, I, I, I thought that move was on. Yep. And I also thought the move was on with Jay Davies. So when you're a little, you know what it's like, you don't want to change your aggression, do you? Well, he shouldn't change what he does so naturally. Exactly. But it looks like he may have done that. But guys, this happens when you get a bad start. So when when you get a bad start and the picture that you rehearsed a thousand times last night before you went to sleep doesn't play like you think, it scrambles your day. Here's the replay on screen once again. Didn't get far enough up. It was only a few millimetres, as Mark Dutton room. said. He had the room on the inside, I reckon, though, don't you think, uh, Neil? So it's, it's a close one, though, but, I mean, we're not driving the car, are we? No, we're not, but yeah. uh, interesting to observe and to consider. You're exactly right. So a little change in rhythm and approach has hurt him today as Craig Lowndes now comes off. I said that they would react to car 33 because they would be worried about the undercut, and that's what they're doing in the Team Vortex entry at the moment. So Lowndes in, McLaughlin, who he was racing, stopped one lap earlier. How will that play out now off the back of this stop? We're all clear at the front, guys. So Lowndes all in. on the fuel. Clear to go on your drop, Craig. Clear to go on your drop, all clear. And we'll keep an eye on where car 33 is. He's actually dealing with a bit of traffic, so that might help Lowndes in that battle. So they were looking to undercut Gary Rogers Motorsport in the battle they're having with Craig Lowndes. Lowndes and Triple Eight have reacted on the next lap and it's going to be line ball when they get down to turn one. What a battle between these two. You'll crisscross on him and get up the inside and McLaughlin is going to make a spot out of, out of that move. That was because of a slightly longer stop for Triple Eight and you can see the reaction from Richard Holway. And then McLaughlin did it with traffic. He had to get around Shea Davies to do it. That's a mighty performance from the boys at GRM. I wonder whether there's really any nice, fuel really variation nice. between the two of them. Beautiful move. Beautiful move. He did it really well. Spatial awareness was really well done there in terms of his execution. He braked it well. He held it wide. He turned back the inside. Did a, a textbook crisscross manoeuvre on Craig Lowndes. He also did, in terms of strategy, he put a little bit less fuel in to be able to do the jump. He's jumped. Craig with the champion, Mark Winterbottom, guys. Sorry, he's, uh, he's just back here in pit lane, obviously. What's your take on the incident with Shane? Um, oh, it just looks like he's tagged me in the rear and spun me around. But, um, yeah, I'm in a position where I don't really, uh, you know, have to defend anything or anything like that. So, um, yeah, you got to drive through, obviously, and paid the penalty for it. Doesn't help me. We've got a bit of damage on the front. But um, in my position, I'm going to race hard. And in his position, he probably... Uh, should use his head a little bit because uh, it's cost him more than it's cost me. But um, anyway, here's what it is. Um, racing hard out there, got a good start. So, uh, yeah, trying to get a good result. But, yeah, we're out of the race now with, with the front. We'll just finish and put a new bar in it. I've never seen him hit the car so hard. So um, trying to straighten her up and we'll, we'll hopefully get out there in a few laps time. Thanks, Frosty. Yeah. How's the highs and lows of this sport? Mark Winterbottom won here last year on the streets of Sydney Olympic Park to win his first championship. And this is the replay. This is just beautiful, textbook manoeuvre. Turns back the inside, Scott McLaughlin. Remembering they've got 21 points between them for third in the championship. And Craig Lowndes, this is on board with Craig, looking back. Have a look at the blue S60 Volvo emerge next to the Dunlop sign. He moves it out. Remember, he's on cold tyres. He just breaks the car, turns it in. Now watch how close this Volvo runs to the back of Craig Lowndes. Beautiful execution. Nice manoeuvre. As I said, great spatial awareness. One of the things about this sport is understanding where you are relative to other cars. And there's the reaction from Richard Holway. 
little clap of the hands to celebrate what was nice strategy and nice driving. So they just underfueled slightly at Volvo to help achieve that, which means they've got to do the opposite in the next stop. So one more stop to come from all the key runners. And so that's going to play out to be an interesting battle as that fuses to the one location later in the day. We're looking at Tim Blanchard here at the moment. McLaughlin, meantime, is very quick out there again. So he's just on the first best sector that we've seen in the race so far, 34-2-3. So he's really cracking on with it at the moment. Meantime, for, let me see, the first 12-odd cars in the field, they've not stopped. And because there's a little bit of strategy to play out yet we're not really sure yet when the next stops will take place but wing cup leading versus van gisberg and van gisberg is currently 12. the point deficit was 191 when all this played out it was 92 points so it's basically a hundred point penalty now he's got a lot of time to play back in but again a hundred points for van gisberg Go back to the Hino Hub discussion pre-race. This is playing out more to an even tyre strategy. So last year, for example, on the hard tyre on the Sunday, looking at the histogram, we saw more people stopping in the first 10 to 15 laps of the race. We've blown through that now. If you look at your lap counter on the top left-hand corner of screen. So this is moving more towards protecting the tyres with two stops, three stints, and using your tyres evenly across those stints if you win Cup, Courtney, Tander, etc., etc. A couple of people have reacted, like McLaughlin and Lowndes, come in a little earlier because they're playing a let's climb over each other game in the case of McLaughlin versus Lowndes. But for the primary runners that are trying to win the race at the moment, win Cup, Courtney, Tander, they're looking after their tyres evenly at the moment. So we can expect to see them somewhere in the next four or five laps. And I think it's clever, Neil, because, as you said before, that the issue of running a soft tyre here and us not racing on them before, basically then having the even tyre strategy takes the risk out. So a little bit less pioneering once you know after the first 20 to 25 laps what the tyre is going to behave like. Just while we're looking at that action down here at turn one. Another thing, oh, I was about to talk about this. If they don't split the strategy between the Holden Racing Team cars, then you actually end up in a position where they need to come in and they can need to do it together. So anyway, point doesn't matter now because they've peeled Courtney out of position number two. So Garth motors on, and that means that they're at least a lap apart in their strategy, which means they get clean run. Yeah, just to just speak in Crumpo, we wanted to get a quick chat with Ryan. Welcome to Ryan. Both the uh, HRT cars sitting very nicely at the moment, just as you bring our car 22 in. Yeah, look, we, uh, we kept them out a little bit longer than we were originally going to, but we saw that Jamie was doing that, so uh, we felt that that's probably the way we could have gone as well. The guys weren't losing too much time compared to everyone else, so we'll see where they come out, but we've got slightly fresher tyres now than the guys in front of us, so hopefully help us later in the race as well. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. No worries, thank you. Wind Cup, no surprise, is in pretty good shape. Dropped the clutch, made a gap, disappeared free air, doing what he wants to at the moment. The battle for second, however, wow, that's an interesting one. That's far from resolved. What this does mean, folks, if you're just joining our coverage, the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship of 2016 rolls on into tomorrow before we bring it to conclusion. Shane Van Gisbergen has had a bad day at the office. Bad start, swallowed by the traffic, and then an awkward move on Mark Winterbottom at turn nine. A pit lane drive through penalty for his trouble. And he's currently sitting inside the top 10 just, and here he is, position number nine. The other half of that battle, Mark Winterbottom, a lot of repair required on that car and spent a lot of time in the garage. It's back out there, but Frosty is last in the field at the moment. So Wind Cup's got 14 seconds over Garth Tander. His teammate, James Courtney's just come in. We're expecting to see Wind Cup, Tander, Percat, etc. very soon. It's the railway station for Sydney Olympic Park. You can pop up in the centre of the precinct here and come and enjoy your supercars racing. There's still time to do it tomorrow. If you happen to be in or near the Sydney market, Nick Percat's come out of third All position. Clear to drop, uh, you go, mate. It's all clear. He's got the McGrath Foundation colours on that car, supporting a great cause this weekend. Rick Kelly, Shea Davies, Cam Waters, turn 11 for these fellas. This looks like it's got trouble heavily stamped all over it. Ooh, very tight for Shea Davies coming out of the final corner. 
Jamie Winkup, who's done the fastest lap of the race. New lap record, 28.04. 14 and a half seconds in front of Garth Panda. And there will be a very intense battle for second position, given the strategies playing out on soft tyres. Seven cars yet to stop. Winkup, Tanda, Moffat, Kelly, that is Todd. And a pit lane penalty for car triple two for pit lane speeding. So Nick Perkat has either sped on the way in or on the way out for the Lucas Dumbrell Motorsport Repair Management Australia Holden Commodore last weekend for him with that outfit before he moves to Brad Jones Racing for Nick. So uh, that's a shame for what's been a pretty strong run for him so far this weekend. Oh, this is a last minute move. Turn eight, so easy to run wide there. And Bright actually hit the fence on the exit there. Will Davison gets up the inside of Jason Bright. And when he exited, Bright bumped the right-hand rear on the wall. It's Dave Reynolds right up in behind. Dave Reynolds has done a very good job. Hasn't got caught up any drama. He's currently 18th, remembering that he went to the back of the field for a Park Ferme infringement after qualifying. Escapey and I, we were up half OK at maths when we went to school, so we know that uh, if we were going to evenly split the performance of our tyres over 75 laps, that would be 25, 50 and 75. Perfect. Top left of screen, we're on lap 22. So uh, we're going to see the leaders in any tick of the clock if you're going to break the race down into three parts. I gave us a free kick there for our math performance. <laughs> Actually, wasn't that good, as I recall. <laughs> exactly. There's Nick Perkett. And this is this roller coaster area. Lee Holdsworth locks the left hand front, just sneaks down the escape road, and he was almost going to turn it in then. Beautiful spin turn. That's the, that's the spin turn of the weekend so far. Here's Chas Mostert in the same spot. He just, the same thing. That's how Chas goes with this one. Nicely done. I like how you're holding up the diving performance cards for those. The problem is the boys, they're off the racetrack, so they won't be celebrating their flick spins at all, even though you are. So this is Reynolds on the climb back. An infringement after qualifying meant that car and driver starting rear of grid commencement of race number 28. So Reynolds is soldiering forward. Got a very quick car this weekend, Penrite Erebus car. Let's see whether or not he can creep back into the top 10 and then live to fight another day for tomorrow. And this is the battle for second. So McLaughlin, who's just forged a little gap on Craig Lowndes. And Lowndes right there with James Courtney. Go, go, go. Moffat. Pit stop. Car 34. And I'm looking as to how many haven't stopped. So seven cars haven't stopped. Other thing that's... Uh worth monitoring at the moment is just the lap speed of the front running cars so there's not been huge variance between best lap speed performance versus current lap speed performance for Winkup who's now in so they're splitting it exactly as we talked about green strategy the same as we did for the Hino hub in comes Winkup more on the downhill run so this is Tander in from second. Winkup's in from the lead. Absolutely perfect. He's got a cushion, Jamie. Don't worry about screaming. Just make sure everything else is right. And you know what I'd do here is I'd put some extra fuel in so that you minimise the next stop because he's got that cushion. It was 14 and a half seconds. So you can afford to have a longer stop now. Five litres or so would serve you well. Give you another lap and a half, maybe two laps. Out he goes. There's the fellow that he's battling in the championship in Shane Van Gisbergen, who's been into the lane once, but don't be fooled, it was for a pit lane drive through penalty. It wasn't for a stop for fuel and tyres. So he's got to come back into the pits at least twice more. And out goes Tander cleanly as well. And he's got a fair bit of fresh air around the Holden Racing Team car at the moment. That'll serve him well on this outlap. Just uh, watch that stop, guys. It was absolute perfection for Jamie Wincup. You talk about managing those one percenters. He stopped right on the marks perfectly, and you wanted to know the fuel numbers? I make it 64 litres on the United Fuel Rule. Thanks, Rusty. That's great, because that is definitely more fuel than the others. So, good thinking on your feet there by David Couchy and the Brains Trust at Triple Eight Racing, because he could afford to do that.
when you've got that little buffer, as I said, roughly 14 seconds, you can afford to put more fuel in and therefore minimise the next stop. In terms of strategy, very, very clever. So Todd Kelly, Fabian Coulthard and Tim Slade, one, two and three in the race. They have not yet stopped. And we've seen more than once this year, Brad Jones Racing and, and also Dick Johnson Racing Team Penske have tended to run long when they're not in a good position in the field. They're just trying another alternative in their strategic play. To see if it gives them what they want. There's the car sales entry of Todd Kelly. He's got three and a half seconds over Fabian Coulthard. They changed the transaxle in this car yesterday. It wasn't upshifting properly. Todd made the announcement in the gap between New Zealand and this weekend that he's going to continue in the driving seat in 2017. He's a bit unlucky back in Darwin earlier this year where he had great pace. I think that's a great move. He's young, he's fast, he's driven well this year. There's no reason why Todd Kelly wouldn't extend his own driver agreement. <laughs> I wonder whether there's much argument in that, whether there's much negotiation. <laughs> he works very hard. Credit where it's due. Put a massive amount of personal time and investment in continuing to try and develop these cars with his brother. He got a beautiful facility in southeastern Melbourne at Nissan Motorsport. And we had that welcome news in the lead up to Sandown that the Nissan Motor Company, and I saw Ian Morellan here earlier in the weekend from the Nissan Motor Company, they've extended their interest, agreement and enthusiasm for supercar racing going forward, which is great. And here we are now back in car number 22 in the cabin, looking over the left shoulder of James Courtney. And James has been off to a good start so far this weekend and the car rolled out of the truck strongly and we've seen the Holden Racing Team put in some mighty street circuit performances and cast your mind back to the very beginning of the year when he had that monumental battle that you've been celebrating, Mark, with Jamie Wincup. We've seen lots of highlights of the season thus far as Todd comes in, leaves Fabian Coulthard in the lead and Tim Slade shadows him. So two of the top three cars in our in. That only leaves Coulthard to be processed. And you were talking about James Courtney's former on board now with James down to turn one. And he set the fastest lap of the race on lap 21. So that lap record that I spoke of with Jamie Winkup at 28.04 has been eclipsed by James Courtney with a 28.01. Their cars, there's something inherent in the way in which they engineer the cars and the way they set them up that tends to work better on the short time interval racetracks. In other words, for the turns, if you think about this racetrack, folks, versus, say, for example, Bathurst, here at Sydney Olympic Park, the average turning time for the car is very, very short. When you go to somewhere like Bathurst or Phillip Island, you load the car forever and a day, very, very long. So it has an impact. So the average time spent in the corner here at Sydney Olympic Park's only just 3.3 seconds when you take into account all 13 turns. For some reason, that tends to favour the Holden Racing Team setup. The minute they lean on the car in the five, six, seven second turns, and it takes a set, they battle more. And that's something that's actually been driving them crazy, <laughs> trying to figure out why and how to engineer around that. But there's no mistaking their pace this weekend for both cars. For sure. And. You've just been riding with James Courtney. You can also see the body language of Craig Lowndes' car. Lowndes uses a huge amount of curve. Here's Fabian in sharp colours this weekend for DJR Team Penske. Stopped right on the marks. You can see those black markers in the, effectively, the box that they're asked to stop in. Chris, uh, Chris right-hand mirror. Right -hand mirror. And now, all cars have stopped. So a fair bit of fuel required when you run it that far. That's everybody done, as you said. That leaves Wink Cup over Van Gisbergen, but that's somewhat irrelevant. 2.9 seconds. The reality is it's three and a half seconds between Wink Cup and McLaughlin. That's really the focus. The stop that we're seeing on the computer against Van Gisbergen's name is for the drive-through penalty. So we'll see him any tick of the clock. If you recall, we heard Grant McPherson say earlier on, we'll run you right through to the end of this tank now as they try a completely different strategy to find a way to dig out of what's been a tough day. They're on standby here in the lane for car 97. So just letting you know, the crew have come out into the lane. They are waiting for Van Gisbergen. Yeah, so pretty much uh, on cue. Running it right out of fuel from their starting load, which was about 106 litres of fuel, minus what it takes to get out there. So in the reconnaissance and the formation lap, from a full usable tank of about 110 litres in a supercar, and uh, he's standing by now to come into the lane and in. 
So uh, weird to see the 40k signs on the road, the bike lanes, all these different patches, and Murph's going to be down there to call it. Okay, so we see Shane McIntyre coming in now for that pit stop. Well out of it at the moment, but I'm watching this fight between Craig Lowndes and Scott McLaughlin, guys. And based on those fuel numbers that we had before, McLaughlin's going to have to sit still stationary for about just over one and a half seconds longer in the next stop. And at the moment, that gap between the two is about that at the moment, I think, isn't it? Based on uh, what I've seen on the timing screen. So we've got a real fight on our hands between those guys sitting there for that third place in the championship. They certainly have, Greg, well called because this battle it's raged all year. Lowndes currently 21 points in front of McLaughlin. McLaughlin with great strategy and great driving. He's in front now. And Van Gisbergen comes out 22nd. So it's been a horror run in this race for Shane Van Gisbergen. Rusty? We're just waiting for the fuel to settle on the rig here, Scapey, but I make it about 105 litres on the United Fuel Ruler, so about 28 seconds worth of fuel. Big gulp for 97. I just wanted to have a look at the uh, co tire chopper replay again, because I wasn't 100% sure that they did four tires on it, but they did. I just, by the time I focused on the other, the lazy side of the car, there wasn't any action there, but yeah, they the lazy side. The left side here, it, it waves to the crowd. Okay because it's an anti-clockwise circuit, so they turn left a lot here, Mark. Thank you, Right-hand side of the car does a bit more work. Thank you. This is the battle. Second spot. Scott McLaughlin, just in front of Craig Lowndes. 21 points between them. James Courtney, right in behind also. This is fantastic stuff. on some margins here. It's 4.7 seconds between Wincup and McLaughlin, and it's a further second back to Lowndes, and then another second back to Courtney. That's what it looks like. So, first place in this race at the moment, bar incident, or a fumble in the pit lane, looks pretty solid at present for Jamie Wincup. However, this battle in second position, it looks pretty exciting, doesn't it? This is juicy. Now, they have a underfueled McLaughlin ever so slightly to give him a better track position and they also pitted a lap earlier than Lowndes so they did two things to try and advantage them in the battle with Craig Lowndes. So for Richard Holway that worked and for that engineering group down there they'll pay a little bit of that back in the next stop. So do you want some numbers in the championship? Please give me some numbers in the championship. 191 point lead coming in. It's currently 80 points. 80 points, lost 111 points based on where he is. So, this is not over. Wow, this place never ceases to amaze me. Sydney Olympic Park and the drama attached to the place, 80 points. In recent weeks, I felt a bit like Chicken Little because I, I've been a glass half full on it because I keep saying to everybody, everyone's been telling me that it's done. It's not done. And it's never done until it's sorted. And when you come to a place like this where there's so many things can go wrong in a second, then you're crazy to kind of just say, oh yeah, it's all over, he's, all he's got to do is. Because it's not as simple, it's never been as simple as that. The sport is complex, it's full of risk, and the tiniest things have the greatest impact. So, yeah. That's exactly what's played out this afternoon. Barry Rogers, great strategy call by Richard Holway to get that critical pass in front of Craig Lowndes. Yeah, it was. He, he got him in a lap before Lowndes and, and uh, Scotty put together a great out lap. Um, it just got, it's got him into turn one, so important when it's so hard to get past on track. So, yeah, it was a good call by Richard. Really good. Not just uh, fighting for that position in the championship in third, but you guys fighting for that uh, important team championship when those HRT boys are up behind yeah, you. Yeah, the HRT boys are doing pretty well at this stage in uh, fourth and fifth, so um, uh, we'll get mop up a few spots, um, put extra, extra fuel on Moff's car, so I think uh, you'll see as the race unfolds, you should end up a few spots further forward than where it is, so we'll see how we go. Okay, fingers crossed. Thanks, Ray. Little battle going on here between Cam Waters and Will Davison. These fellas are battling for seventh and eighth, and this would be a nice blip in performance for Cam Waters, who's been through a rough initiation in the Supercars Championship of 2016. And bear in mind, this is the Dunlop Series champion. We talk about it 
on repeat cycle that it's a hard, hard game when you come in. And you can come through the junior categories and feel pretty special because you've had some success and then you come here and you get trapdoored in this caper. So he's a rookie this weekend, officially, from a Virgin Australia Supercars Championship perspective, but he's done a lot of mileage here in the past and been successful. But they went and had a rookie test day at Winton recently for Cam, and they found a couple of things that have really given him a hand this weekend, and you can see it on screen. So it's Win Cup 4.8 seconds over McLaughlin, then Lowndes, then Courtney, then Tanda, Rick Kelly, Cam Waters on screen, and Will Davison, who's eighth at the moment, a bit hungrier with the curb usage over the top of the turns there at six and seven for him. And this has been the trouble spot on the track over the years at eight, that off camber exit, they slide down the road there and into the wall. Will be sizing him up a bit at the moment. Here he is having a look down the inside. Oh, nice. Cam locks it and he's got him. Nice move, very nice move, Will Davison. On the inside there on the dirty side of the road, he positioned the car beautifully. Cam had a little wheel lock on the outside of the road, got caught with that bump and a superb authority pass from Will Davison. So we've got a great battle for second with McLaughlin, Lowndes and Courtney. We've got a fascinating battle in the championship. 191 points this morning. It's currently 80 point lead that Shane Van Gisbergen and has over Jamie Winkup. He's down in 22nd whilst Winkup leads. Boys, I was just watching on television uh, the, the way that uh, Cam Waters' car has just been looking on the track and he's squirming around a little bit. You've got to look back that he stopped at lap nine. So that car's been on the road for quite a while. They're looking to get him to 38. Just spoke to Brendan Hogan. They are going to make a change to the chassis uh, when they do bring that car in. A bit of a ride height change. He's not overly happy with it. The thing is starting to use up its rear tyres a little bit. So he's got a few more laps to go before he has to come in and do that final stop. That'll mean a long run to the finish for car six. Yeah, off the back of the move down at turn nine when Will Davison snuck down the inside. I heard Brendan on the radio say we've got another eight laps. Just take a drink and a breath, settle down and soldier on the best you can. So he's had to sacrifice a spot. In fact, he's just run straight through. There's a timing loop down at turn two, across the chicane at two, three and four, and he's just run through it down there as well. So he's battling for grip at the moment, Cam Waters. But if he can continue as he is at the moment and is on for a solid top 10 result, that's not a bad performance for the rookie this weekend. Now, Todd Kelly's having a crack here. Just on that subject of using tyres, remember those that peel off early, uh, are also going to find near the back end of this window of the tyre usage harder as well. So for Lowndes and McLaughlin, they've asked more of their tyre set in this stint of the race than Wind Cup and, uh, well, well, Wind Cup, Wind Cup and Wind Cup. And Wind Cup. Yeah, well, or Wind Tanda, Cup, Tanda, yeah, they were the other that's ones. right. But those that actually came in early and flinched early, they'll hurt a little bit more at the back end of this run. But there'll be a bit of a play for the undercut towards the end of this fuel load as well as they prepare for the second stop. This is a mighty battle, isn't it? <laughs> They're pretty serious, aren't they? Todd looked like he was going to fire down the inside. He looks like he's having a little look now down to turn two. There's a bad bump in the braking area just right there. And Caruso has got the wear of strangers. It's the genuine is best message from Nissan Motor Company this weekend. Lost it, who made contact with Mark Winterbottom on the opening lap down into turn two and three. Up. currently leads by just over five seconds and then this thralling battle Todd gets it done nice move gets to run out of turn seven up the hill this is Dawn Fraser Avenue this is a great shot from the Coates higher chopper cam Dawn Fraser Avenue over the roller coaster at the end of that straight roughly 225k on the approach to turn nine requires a lot of finesse with the, in most cases, the right foot. A couple of drivers in the field are left foot breakers, but a lot of finesse on the brake pedal down there to modulate the brake pedal pressure and ride the pedal pressure as the load varies in the car and there's different surfaces down there as well. We're back now with Wind Cup, 5.3 seconds over McLaughlin. I've just been looking at fuel numbers. There's that provisional championship scenario, bottom left of your screen here as well. Expect that both Courtney and Tanda get a little benefit from the way in which they fueled earlier as well. So they'll be stationary for a shorter period of time. Wind Cup, Courtney and Tanner have all got Ooh, the least amount ugly. of fuel to put in. So that was a bit of a moment for Michael Caruso. You can see how much of a battle Cam Waters has got on his hands at the moment in lack of grip land. It's a new country. 
And uh, here he is down at turn two. Is he going to be able to hang in there? Just. He's got toll all over him at the moment. And Chaz Mostert bringing up the rear of this crew. So Cam made a mistake down there at turn one. Then he went back out onto the road. In very awkward fashion for Michael Caruso. He was already committed under brakes. And then the Monster Falcon emerged back onto the racing line. Michael did a nice job to move back to the inside. Now Todd's just shaping up here. So a little brake lock. Does he get off? Oh, the amount of cars we've seen over the years go in that tyre wall at turn eight is extraordinary as Todd Kelly gets this run down Dawn Fraser Avenue and he fires down the inside. Oh, with the wheels locked, can he get it stopped? Yes, he does. That's nice that. brake modulation. That's exactly what you were just talking about. Yeah, so that's recognising the lockup. Now, some of them have got lights on the dashboard, some of them use an audio system as well, and you actually get a horn in the ear or look at cam he's battling with that car at the moment he'll be really pleased to get off this tire set and up the inside goes his teammate mostard at turn 13. he yields that spot now james moffat's joining this party too these fellas are battling for 10th through to 14th at the moment and it's a vigorous battle and moffat's now well in it Caruso will be pleased to have cleared all this and driven off into the distance just to get it into a more of a de-stressed zone. He will. Man of the match so far, David Reynolds, up 18 positions from the back of the field. So you said earlier that they've been very happy with the pace of the Erebus Commodore and the infringement from qualifying went to the rear of the grid. And a nice little move here. Can Moffat maintain the track position down to turn five? Yes, he can. Nice move. So Cam Waters in serious tyre trouble at the moment. James wasn't going to blink then. He fired the car up the inside and was absolutely committed to that line. So that was always going to be about Cam yielding, and he did wisely. Now Fabian Coulthard's going to have a piece of that action as well. Meantime, it's still static at 5.3 seconds between Wincup and McLaughlin. Now Wincup's got 20 seconds of fuel to put on. McLaughlin's got to put on 24 seconds. Lowndes has got to put on... 23 seconds, Courtney and Tanda, 22 and 21 seconds of fuel. And then there's always a little bit of crew variance rattling the wheels on and off as well. Replay of the wild moments that are being had down there at turn six, and that's Andre Heimgartner just tripping over the kerb. And here's Cam's moment down at turn one that we spoke about before. He'd just be desperate to get off that tire set. You watch when he comes out. Yeah. Because here's Michael Caruso. He was already committed. Oh, that was so close. Nice job, Michael Caruso. He actually stayed on the brake, kept it turning. It's a little bit cheeky, that re-entry. But at a minimum, will have made eyebrows go up in race control. Murph? Yeah, I just uh, went in and spoke to Brad Worcesterson, who's the uh, engineer for Chaz Molston. And it might not look like it, but uh, Chaz actually said the car balance is actually quite good. We saw him go up the escape road earlier on, have to do the flick turn, which cost him five spots. He, it's been 25 laps since that car was in the pit lane, so he stopped reasonably early. Brad Wisterson said the balance is good. Uh, we need to get uh, a bit of luck with a safety car would help us and uh, get him through to the next stop. But 55, trucking along, not too bad. We're approaching the critical lap. And so uh, the safety car right at the moment for anybody would be most awkward. Well, it's actually trying to get the 140 litres now, isn't it, in terms of the fuel drive? Sorry. Yeah, most awkward. Most awkward, <laughs> it would be. It's a nice <laughs> way of explaining it. Yeah. So uh, they're all down there at the moment doing whatever you need to on the Ouija board to make sure that uh, we get another couple of laps of, of green so that they can then get the fuel in safely. Here's David Reynolds, car number nine, the Penrite Erebus Motorsport entry. Scapey's already anointed him as man of the match today. They went to the rear of grid, having qualified seventh for a Park Ferme infringement, and he's storming through the field. He's in the top ten in eighth. Barry Ryan, we felt the penalty given to Dave Reynolds was, was relatively harsh to start from the rear of the grid, but you guys are doing a sensational job. Yeah, it was a minor error, but we've done a lot of learning this year. This is another hard lesson, but um, we won't do that again. So he's starting from the back. Dave's done a brilliant job to get up to eighth, and... He's got genuine speed. He's a little bit hot in there at the moment, so we're trying to work out a solution to cool him down. But he's um, he's nice and calm and ready to battle to the end. So hopefully, uh, if one more stop, get it to the end on green tyres. So yeah, it's good. Are you guys having trouble with with cooling issues, or he's just hot because it's hot? Uh, I think he's just hot. Yeah, the, the helmet blower's working. The cool suit's nice and cool, but he's just struggling with temperature a bit. All right, thanks, Barry. It's probably hot under the collar more than anything. Okay. <laughs> 
got a great record here. He's had a front row start, two second placings for two podiums, but impressively, he's got a 100% finishing record at Sydney Olympic Park, David Reynolds, and he's on the march right now. Checking the gap between Wincup and McLaughlin at six seconds, so it's just opened up another three quarters of a second. And remember that Wincup has got time in hand with the refueling in the next stop. Great images from the Coates Hire Chopper looking at turns 11, 12, 13. A little coffee shop that I came to in the morning down there, just next to the grass. <laughs> just to be able to spring to life. And here's a great shot, super slow-mo. Scotty McLaughlin, check this out. How do you like your air, Scofie? That's a great shot, isn't it? That's very high on two wheels. Remembering that the cars on soft tyres I tend to do that more, don't they? I just about see the part number on the bottom tail of shaft. the tail shaft. I was trying to think of a bit then. <laughs> That's really cool. That's what we love about these street circuits. They serve up awesome images. That one's pretty wild. Now, uh, we've got Mostert back in the lane, by the way. This is tightening up here. Pressure's building at the back end. We've got 37 laps remaining, and here's Chaz Mostert that I spoke of. I can hear him on my radio. All calm down there at the moment. I can't wait to see what happens here in the next stop because this battle with these three gentlemen will be fierce. Remembering that McLaughlin is 21 points behind Craig Lowndes in the championship coming into this event. And it'll be on. Gentlemen. Gentlemen. They're rabid racers. <laughs> See, that's the difference between us, isn't it? There's nothing gentlemanly. You've been out there with these guys. There is nothing gentlemanly about the way they're operating out there at the moment. It is fight to the bitter end for McLaughlin, for Lowndes and for Courtney. There's no Queensbury rules. <laughs> what about gentleman Jim Richards? <laughs> now, now, that's a whole other topic that we need to reserve another program for. So let's have a look at some split telemetry here. This is cool. Jason Bright, Michael Caruso. Gear position revs in that uh, outside scale and obviously speed in the middle there as well so uh, we're seeing lots of information there and the way in which they go about it and there's always little variations this is uh, now you're getting to engineer at home this is what it's like so uh, if you stay back and do your late night homework in the supercars paddock then you become a data freak so they just sit there and consume this into the wee small hours <laughs> it's very true very analytical business. Even the drivers look at this quite a lot in terms of their own line and their own method and technique of driving the car. See the difference there between Jason Bright and Michael Caruso. Michael Caruso is very abrupt, very savage with his gear shift and his steering technique. Caruso with his old teammate Moffat and his buddy on the outside. Uh, these guys are not yielding in either direction. Coulthard's in here as well, boxing on down the inside. So Moffat clears them. Now Coulthard up the inside of Caruso. Fingers crossed for this one. So that was a nice move by Moffat and in comes Bright. He wants out of this battle. So some nail biters going on up and down the field, depending on which little pack you focus on here at the moment. Moffat's showing pretty good pace out there at present, Scapey, so he's inside the top ten. That's ninth position for James Moffat. Fabian Coulthard next. There's Jason Bright for Team BOC. Yeah, plenty of guys choosing to do the fuel to the finish strategy here. Crompo, and we saw the 55. He was the first one in to get it done. He is fuel to the finish. The 140 litres drop has gone into the tank of the super cheap auto racer for Chaz Mostert. As I said, those guys now would be hoping for a safety car to benefit them, being that they've already done those stops. So Jason Bright getting fuel to the finish. Rick Kelly, I'm sure, has also just done exactly the same. So things are starting to hot up in the lane again. So we talk about the critical lap like it's a fixed number, but clearly it varies for each team in when either they have to or they want to because there's two distinct differences there. And Lowndes now coming in. Remember that he was in that little strategic battle between there, buddy. Scotty McLaughlin. So it's Just the opposite now. Five. They're trying to Just undercut kill. McLaughlin. That's right. That's exactly right. And there's 10 laps between these guys who stopped you. early, Lowndes and McLaughlin, versus Winkup. So their tyres in the last few laps, in fact, it was 8.1 seconds. Now the gap between Winkup and McLaughlin. 
because of the tyre difference. Off, guys. Not long now, guys. And the clear relative when performance. Right? Clear when you drop. Still clear. Still clear. So there's a little variation in the Lowndes and McLaughlin fuel strategy. Still clear, mate. Still in favour of Lowndes. And now he'll potentially get the benefit of the undercut that we saw McLaughlin apply to Lowndes early on. So Craig's done to the end of the race. Win Cup still leads. He's got okay, 8.3 seconds mate. over McLaughlin. And McLaughlin's coming in. So Richard Holloway just said, pit this lap. Cole Lock, ties for Lowndes. Blocked a break for Lowndes. He gets away with it. That was close. Well, he, ought, well, he got away with it in terms of not hitting anything, but he yielded to... Holdsworth, so in that sense, he didn't because he had the big bobble down there on the dirty side of the track with the cold tyres. Here we go for McLaughlin. Critical stop. Pit lane fe a speed limiter engaged. 40 clicks. He's on the run into the lane, boys. Yeah, let's watch him come in. Scott McLaughlin had a great inlap. He needs to be right on the mark, which he is. Gil hose is in. Everyone goes to work. Nothing too rushed about him. There's a change going on in the rear. There's a right height change happening there, boys. So, the Gary Rogers Motorsport team take the time to make a change. The dry ice goes in for the cool suit. The fuel's still attached. Last couple of seconds. We'll watch the getaway. This is going to be critical. And he's away. It's going to be close. It's going to be close, Murph, because it was 30.6. Now, HRT have jumped. Holden Racing Team have jumped. Scott McLaughlin in that stop. So great strategy for James Courtney. He came in behind. He's gone out in front. Remember I said that both he and Garth Panda were in good shape with their refuel by about three seconds. And that's just been demonstrated. So there he is, he drops in behind Van Gisberg and James Courtney, and here is car number 33. Rear right height change, I heard Murph say, and that's Lowndes behind. Now, that's why it was critical to try and clear Holdsworth the previous lap. Took him 3.4 kilometres to get that done, Craig Lowndes. That's why he fought so hard on the cold tyres down there for that not to happen. That's contributed, apart from the slight difference in the undercut and the fuel strategy, to McLaughlin being in front of Lowndes now. So they've reversed where they were in that last sequence, this will be a great battle to the end of the race now. And a little tweak, a rear right height change to car 33. I didn't catch with Greg whether that was an up or down move. We'll follow that up for you, whether they're looking for more turn or more drive with the Volvo. But we'll get onto that for you. So more turn is raised the rear. More drive would be to lower the rear. Murph? Yeah, you're on to it, guys. Uh, so I just had a quick chat to Richard Holway, who's pretty pumped about that pit stop and uh, him getting out. So they just lowered the rear ever so slightly. Um, yeah, the car, it's been very, very twitchy for, for Scott McLaughlin, so they're just trying to get it a little bit more settled in the rear. So lowering it will help it drive off the corners and protect those rear tyres. Meantime, Van Gisbergen's all over the back of Tim Slade at the moment. Turn 13, the final corner. See how much curb they take, and then they slide those ton and a half cars up to the wall. So that was a nice exit by Tim Slade then. Shane's got to get a little closer to be able to make that move. He's very good down over the bump in to turn two. And let's just see what he can do now. This is a very interesting braking area. A very aggressive bump just near the 150 marker. And then you've got to try to modulate the brake, flow the car into this very slow complex, left, right, and then left. Get the power on down to turn five. This is the signature corner on the racetrack. Big, fast, left, flowing corner. Tanders in from position number two. Just remember that Tander was just like James Courtney. They took more fuel in their first stop. They don't have to be stationary as long now in the second stop relative to those they're racing. Courtney just got a very good run on Van Gisberg and then coming out of turn eight. And they're both having a little look. And Garth's going to get into this party. This is holding up James Courtney. Remember, the battle for second is really between McLaughlin, Lowndes and Courtney. Courtney's being affected now by Van Gisberg and Slade. It was good strategy by HRT, so Slade's in. Now, the pressure is on Shane Van Gisbergen with a charging James Courtney, and there's Tander. So let's just see what happens here with the rejoin. 
Garth just gives the wheel a bit of a twitch there to warm the tyre, just to get a little feel for the car before the braking area. Cold tyres into turn one. Shorter fuels helped him, and the traffic effect has also given him that cushion, Garth Tander. Remember that even though we're seeing Van Gisbergen showing two stops, one of those was a pit lane drive through penalty. So we've still got to see Shane come back in yet, so it takes him out of this current position. So he's not in this battle in reality with these two guys in the red cars. So Garth Tando has been the real beneficiary of the traffic effect for Courtney and in terms of strategy for fuel, he's jumped into what is really second position. Vic is being a little wide there at turn eight again. Yeah, he didn't use the curving at all. Other thing is, look up, it's all blue. Early in the day, it was gray. So that'll be affecting the track behavior as well. It's gonna be a little slippery out there in the back end of this race because I just glimpsed the computer. 30 laps remaining. A lot of racing to come here. So hot, greasy conditions. In fact, I reckon it's gone over our forecast top, particularly with the sunlight on the racetrack here at the moment. So. Yeah, it's going to be brutal out there for these guys, and they're going to work hard to make these tyres run to the end. So, on the one hand, is this the razor blade that you have to walk. You've got to go flat out. You've got to race super hard with those around you, but you've got to make the Dunlop soft tyre last to the end of the 74th lap. Crompo just crunching some numbers down here at Red Bull Racing Australia. We make it that Jamie Wincup needs about 76 litres to get to the end. So a stop just over, or stationary time, just over 20 seconds. But the thing that's caught my eye in here at the moment, they have a brand spanking new set of tyres up their sleeve for Shane Van Gisbergen. And it looks like they may put on a mixed set when he stops next time around. So brand new green rubber on the working side of the 97 and maybe some used tyres down that passenger side. We haven't had a safety car. 94% chance of safety car at this venue. Yeah, so what Rusty's alluding to there, grip that car up and compress the field and watch him go. So that strategy decision was made by McPherson and the data strategy people very early. As soon as all the trouble started, let's run him out to the end of the first stint to the bottom of that tank load and then rejig the way they use their tyres. And they're also thinking about tomorrow in the way they play that as well, because they are not giving up on the championship by any stretch of the imagination. It's not an ideal day for them, but it's certainly a long way from over. There's a lot of points to be grabbed out there at present. And the only real trap with putting green, fresh tyres down the loaded side is the linearity under brakes. They tram track around, they move around. It's very easy to lock a wheel, make a mistake on the opening lap. It's a horrible feeling. It's like one half of the car's got flat tyres. And right here, we've already seen lots of guys make a mistake on cold tyres going into Turn 1 anyway. It's a big, fast approach down there at the end of Australia Avenue. And an intriguing battle behind Jamie Winkup. Check out the beautiful Sydney day. Clear blue sky. It was a cloudy start. It was a roaring hot day here yesterday at Sydney Olympic Park. Very hot, hard day at the office for the supercar drivers who were really feeling it when they finally gave up work at the end of yesterday. And they were looking forward to it being a little bit easier to work through the day today. But uh, we've got the sunlight back out there on there. There was early talk earlier in the week about today delivering some thunderstorms and some showers. That hasn't happened. So race predictor. Look down the bottom left-hand side of the screen, you can see where your favourite driver is, what's happening in terms of stops, current track position, and where they might land. So, Tanda looking pretty racy out there at the moment. Remember, there's still a lot to play out. We've got a lot of racing to come. No option. No option. That's not negotiable, thanks, David. So, 28 laps remaining in the race. Hit this lap. No option. And uh, there's no option. <laughs> That's, uh, that's what it's like to negotiate with Mark Scaife, folks. Uh, there, there's no option. you just got to do what he says. And here's Jamie, who's driven superbly, made a beautiful start. Van Gisbergen, who dominated qualifying, made a bad start, went back to fourth at turn one, went back to sixth after the contact at turn two. And we see Wink Cup coming in for a very important stop. Yeah, mate. Van Gisbergen. He's currently sixth on track, but he hasn't done his yeah, second stop yet. Use a lead, but not too much. 
Stop very calm. I like the way that they talk to Jamie and Shane. Very relaxed. So I'm pondering yep. why the no option part. So I imagine that's because they've got a plan in place for Van Gisbergen. So does that mean he's not far away from the stop? What's the no option thing about for Jamie? I'm pondering too. Ponder away. I'll try and come up with some answers for you on that one. So here's Tanda. Todd Kelly still leading this race. 6.2 seconds over Wind Cup. Moffat's in the mix as well. Still more stops to play. Todd's looking to do his second. James Moffat's doing, uh, looking to do his second stop here as well. James Courtney lights a blaze. That's the battle for second. This is a great shot. One of the most famous sporting precincts in Australia. I wasn't sure where that camera was going there then. That's down Dawn Fraser Avenue. There's the train station on the right. ANZ Stadium on your right. And then a very tricky braking area at roughly 225 kilometers an hour. Cars unloaded, brake modulation required. Very difficult racetrack. So lap 49 of 74. A couple of stops to come. Jamie Winkup continues to lead. The battle for second is raging between Tanda, Courtney, McLaughlin and Lowndes. The radio message from David Couchy to his driver, Jamie Winkup before was pit now, no option. And that got all of us kind of scratching our head. Why was there no option? Mark Dutton, team manager, tells me the car, the 88, was nearly in the pot in terms of fuel. They were nearly out of fuel. They had to pit him at that point, and they are trying to run Van Gisbergen as long as they possibly can, guys. Well done, Rusty. That stopped us pondering. Hmm. And here's the rejoin. And uh, when initially launched, Jamie Wincup didn't actually get away that cleanly. It had had a secondary stab at the clutch pedal to get it mobile, and he managed to get it away. And he's got a pretty handy buffer over Garth Tander, and there's Garth in car number two, the Holton Racing Team entry. That's what that fresh air looks like. James Moffat, second stop. This is in replay. And uh, what's going on here? What are we tweaking? Water pressure, isn't it? Yeah, is it water? Yeah. yeah. It's a hard place on cars, on, on every <laughs> it's component on, on the car. So it, everything gets a big workout here. All the temperatures and pressures are ultra sensitive to the heat that's generated around here. Everything gets pounded over the curbs, shakes, rattles, and rolls. And if you spend a bit of time behind another car around here, it really spikes the water and oil temperatures and also the brake temperatures. Oh, and Scapey's pointing to him, so it spikes the commentators. <laughs> the he means the drivers. I know what you mean. I'm just being so it makes the driver really work good. Keep it up. too. It's a very physical racetrack. It's only 3.4 k's, but there's almost no brake. The only brake you really get is down Australia Avenue, as Shay Davies. This might be safety car time. And right. there's Dale Wood parked there, on the way up. out of turn four. It's great news for Shane Van Gisbergen if this does trigger the Lexus RCF safety car. Yeah, I think it will. Dale's safety car boards and flag, safety car boards and flag, safety car standby. Last weekend at Nissan Motorsport for Dale Wood, he's on the move to Erebus Motorsport in 2017. And true to predictive form and probability, the safety car deploys again at Sydney Olympic Park. 94% prop coming in. This will compress the field. They've got those good tyres standing by for Shane Van Gisbergen. There's Wienerbottom. That'll be those. All bright and shiny. Are they going to stay with the strategy of the gripped-up tyres on the right side and the not-so on the left? 
they're not so gripped on the left. It's an interesting explanation of tyre performance. About five more seconds now, Mark. Five more. Uh, all oh, four all look pretty four. shiny to me. Yeah, it was a, uh, a good play. They had them mixed, so they threw me off the scent here in the pit lane, guys, and any rivals that were looking on, but they brought out all four new ones, as you can see. I've got a Harbour Bridge for you for sale later in the day too, Rusty, if you're up for it. <laughs> Thank and you, a, yes. And an I'll Opera House. I'll take it. <laughs> Here's Gizzy. Hello, I'm happy, as you can see. We'll have to see how we go here now, but swing around those guys and get nice and straight here, please. Wing Cup had the, the eight seconds on Tanda prior to this. This will invigorate him. Yeah, this will. This will light his fire. Clear. Five seconds, mate. Not a lot of Just fuel to stick in. Through. Two seconds. Clear. 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 And some oh, brand spanking new Dunlop cold tyres going on the car. He jumps into the queue in front of David Reynolds. And he's all gripped up and good to go. And he gets there at the blend line just in time. OK, mate. Uh, the safety car is going through the chicane, first chicane. This is going to be very, very interesting from this moment. What happens? What unfolds for Van Gisbergen? Because it's fantastic news for him to bunch the field up and be able to do the stop under safety car conditions. But Greg Murphy said it before, and we were contemplating the way that Shane has raced today. He qualified superbly. Uh, yeah, man, but a bad start. Day. I probably would have liked it a little bit later to get a better tyre advantage, but that's OK. That's Graham McPherson talking to, uh, so you hear him say, I would have liked it later, but you never get to choose the safety car. The new tyres serve you better towards the back end. Uh, now, why did Dale Wood end up parked up down there? Remember they had a little problem with an oil overfill yesterday when they rolled that car out, but it looks like he might have eaten the wall down there, has he, at turn five? It does look like it's made contact there, but I'm not sure if he's just parked it close or not out of the way. The thing I was trying to get to before was Van Gisbergen today, with his overtaking manoeuvres, he hasn't been aggressive enough. He hasn't done what he normally does and that's a big bold execution of those overtaking maneuvers and now that the field's compressed he's going to have to make some passes you know that feeling when you leap off when you've qualified well pole position and away he goes from the line and you pop out the other side of turn one and the boys are giving you the short back and sides it immediately takes you out of your rhythm and it's and there's panic's the wrong word because it overstates it but it's like a, ah i don't need to be here and then it completely skews the way in which you see the race it's an awkward feeling because the expectation with a car that fast is to be racing in the first couple of spots and he would have imagined battling with jamie so that would have thrown him i'm sure in the early phase of the race one of the focuses for me is uh, Garth Tanner and James Courtney doing a very, very nice job out there. Good job in qualifying, but also got some pretty good car pace. And I reckon there might be a little confused McLaughlin and Lowndes sort of wondering how those two blokes got ahead of them. So give us the synopsis there, ATV. Oh, look, yeah, we've had good car speed. Um, yeah, qualified third row, which we're happy about. But we should have been a little bit higher up. Um, both of them had their head down. We moved their strategies a little bit at the first stop to separate them. GT put a bit more fuel in, so we always know, knew he was going to come back up. And the same with JC over McLaughlin and Lounsey. We knew as long as we could keep up behind them, yep. we'd, uh, we'd have a good shot. And equally, we wanted them to stop before us because we wanted them to have the, the outlap on the colds while we were still on the hot tyres. So at this stage, it all went to, uh, went to plan, but we've got a way to go yet. Yeah? yeah, there's a way to go, but uh, good positions to be in. And obviously, the boys are, are pretty comfortable with the pace that those cars have got. Yeah, both of the guys have been quick. GT's been very quick, so... Whether we've got enough to give uh, Wink up a little run to the flag, I don't know. Let's, let's watch the uh, watch the show and see what unfolds. Thanks, mate. Cheers, mate. Oscar Fioranotto, our Guru. resident engineer in the commentary Guru. box, has uh, got the abacus out and uh, he's calculated that there's about a three-second advantage across the two stops for both the Holden Racing Team cars in the race today. So, a combination of their stationary time and their in and out laps as well. So that's given them. Uh, some of the track position that they've earned out there. There's more to it than just the stops, but that's been a very good performance for them across both those 
well not compulsory stops but you've got to put the 140 litres of fuel in that was a was a nasty looking bit but we'll, we'll get to that shortly this is the view bathed in sunlight here in Sydney They're looking past the Novotel and then this is turn 9 10 11 past the train station and uh, what do you want to hazard a guess as to what component we're looking at there Scafi well, Dave Reynolds has just thrown it out of the car what yeah so meaning as in something inside the car that's I can't actually work out what it is it's an interesting looking widget test of our technical skill and we've just actually just come up filed. with a zero <laughs> you so. gave yourself a rap about the mass before yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's Dale Wood making his way back so um, we'll get our parts <laughs> manual out boys I just spoke to the team at Nissan Motorsport they think that Dale Wood has uh, broken a steering arm on one of the curbs and he's just parked up against the wall so he hasn't actually come together with the wall as such and despite the stress of this championship battle at Red Bull Racing, a rare moment of laughter when, uh, for both Mark Dutton and for, uh, for uh, Grant McPherson, engineer to Shane Van Gisbergen, before they taped a gel or a goo to the roll cake for him so he could enjoy it during the safety car period if we got one, like he might use for cycling or marathon running. And he got on the radio and said, oh, that does not taste very nice at all. It's because it's about 60 degrees. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, exactly. been cooked in there. It's uh, effectively been in the microwave. No, this is not here. good. Yeah, so James Moffat in and attention to that car. And Remember uh, the water pressure issue from before, so yeah. maybe overheating. As you said, it's a car wrecker, this place. Still hot conditions. So with a condensed field... Uh, here we go, there's... Uh, some of the madness that's gone on in this race, and particularly down the order in the opening laps of these races on a street circuit, there's always a lot more chaos than meets the eye. So you saw Chris Pitha getting tangled up there early on in the game and uh, gives you an idea of the stress and strain through suspension componentry, wheels and tyres. I don't know how it all manages to stay glued together. And some bits get away, as we saw before. <laughs> They've managed to escape. I could tell you what they are. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Race highlights. And uh, the big story right from the very moment that we got going was the tardy start for Shane Van Gisbergen. And then have a look at Winkup who blazes. McLaughlin gets down the inside, checks up a little bit down there. Lowndes was on the outside line. When they got down to turn two, there was more push and shove. Van Gisbergen had to go straight ahead because he had Mark Winterbottom and Chas Mostert in the back of that car. And then further back, this is the shot that we saw a few moments ago of Pippa getting turned around and put Huge First damage on the left rear corner of that car, well picked up. There was only one driver left in the 26 driver field that hadn't had a birthday this year, and he was the last one to tick that box. And this is a big moment at turn nine. Shane Van Gisbergen and Mark Winterbottom, an awkward moment. He didn't quite get down there. It kind of looked inviting, and then as they do, the gaps diminish when Frosty has to turn in. And then he tripped over him on the other side, damaged the Falcon more than the Holden. And uh, he's losing, losing spots there rapidly, and Graham McPherson his engineer on the phone to him, telling him that he had a drive-through penalty for his contribution to all of that. And then they undercut with Scotty McLaughlin. They were in a battle with Craig Lowndes. Bits of great strategic plays going on for the minor placing second, third and fourth involving Lowndes, Tander, Courtney, McLaughlin. And then for Dale Wood, there's a little failure with that car that's left him parked up on the outside of turn five that's triggered the lexus rcs safety car there it is and now the field is condensed so stopping and thinking about what that means you've got van gisbergen in ninth with fresh tires on the car brand new green tires he's in full qualifying mode he's still got 21 laps of racing from this moment and we're not back to green flag racing yet in front of him todd kelly will davison rick kelly now he might be able to clear them and then the staircase gets very steep because then you've got a battle with Lowndes, McLaughlin, Courtney, Tander, several of those, they don't care. They'll put their elbows up and race very hard. Very true. Would you like a points update? Please. 125 points as we contemplate this last sprint, last 20 laps. 
Van Gisbergen come into the race 191 points clear of Wink Cup. Currently, Wink Cup first, Van Gisbergen ninth, and as you can see there, 125 points. Have a look there, the Lowndes McLaughlin battle continues to rage, and there's a lot of work to do still when they're fourth and fifth on track behind Tanda and Courtney. So it may well be the case that when I called earlier in the day that it you know, pushes on into Sunday, this is a big reprieve now for Van Gisbergen. It's an opportunity. It doesn't necessarily mean that it always plays out positively, but it is an opportunity now to swing the pendulum back the other way. So that's a big free kick for him, and it's a big hurt for Jamie Wincup to have the field all over you once again. We're back to racing. Coates Hire, Sydney 500. Second last race of the championship season. And we've got 20 laps remaining. Wincup's made a great three start. Oh, whole tyres, and they're trying to wriggle some heat into them. In the case of Tanda, he actually half got it sideways on the run down towards turn one. And he's allowed more than several car lengths between himself and Jamie Wincup. So Wincup has bolted. And we need to keep a close eye on whether or not Van Gisberg... Gee, Shane's a long way from the back of Todd Kelly at the restart. Yeah, because he was behind Shay Davies right. and Shay moved over. So that was a nice bit of driving by Shay Davies there to get out of the way of the championship leader. As they emerge at turn five, this is a spectacular corner. Look at Wind Cup clearing out here. So there's no mistaking the pace in him and his car. Sydney Olympic Park again this weekend. There's the gaps. That's Shane Van Gisberg at turn eight. Still in ninth place. He's officially five seconds from the lead. So we'll monitor that margin very carefully and see what the gains may or may not be. And that's Todd Kelly looking pretty wild down the inside at nine. And Will saw him coming, decided that it was a good idea not to be a part of what was going to be an accident. Almost Turned the steering out and almost had his own in the process. So great situational awareness from Will Davison to see all that in the mirrors. Exactly. So check this out. This is Wink Cup. Have a look at the aggression. And so did Garth. He did a little bit of copycat work down to turn one. Just trying to warm the tyre up. I was focused on Tandor. I didn't realise that Wink Cup had done the same. And now he's on the back of the car that he had the same team colours when he was driving for Techno in years gone by. So Will Davison's just given him a ton of space at turn one. And away goes Van Gisbergen. He moves up a spot now into eight. He's a step closer to getting his arms around this championship. But the margin to the lead, 6.7 seconds. So the way in which Wind Cup is applying pace at the moment, he's checked out. He's gone. But for Van Gisbergen, if he can continue this march, and, Steve, and keep on making places. If he gets more than 150 points clear, oh, it's still on here between Holdsworth. And was that Andre Heimgartner in car number three? It was. Down the order. And Tim Blanchard. <laughs> Pretty wild stuff in the minor placings. So these fellas are battling for 19th, 20th, and 21st at the moment. 12 points there separating McLaughlin and Lowndes. And Cup with that move of Van Gisbergen's. Gained another six points there, Van Gisbergen, so 131. I just told Cam Waters to look after the tyres, and I looked down to confirm who it was on the radio and looked up and saw him locked up on the run there to turn one. So he's having a bit of a battle out there at the moment in his endeavours. So this is on board with Van Gisbergen. We're looking at the back of Will Davis in turn one. That's more authoritative. That's the Shane Van Gisbergen that we've seen flying on street circuits this year. In particular, his performance at the Gold Coast was stellar. And now look at the gap that he's made over Will. So he's got some clear track here. 6.9 seconds from the lead. The last lap for him. Yeah, that's one lead. Seems to be a little better than the front straight. It was 29-0. Talk to me on the pit straight, I think it was. Uh, so 29-0 last lap for Shane Van Gisbergen. A little bit slower than Jamie Wincup. Todd Kelly is seriously fast at the moment. He's really... He's fourth fastest of all the cars on the previous lap. He's really closed that gap to his brother. He's got younger tyres by a fair margin. He's got 11 lap younger tyres, Todd Kelly. That'll do it. Certainly will. You can see that gap there. It's closed. And 
like the lounge body language in behind Scott McLaughlin there a couple of laps ago to show the nose of the car. Often talk about Lowndes overtaking technique and some of the gamesmanship and racecraft that he uses. And for Scott, he needs to try to hold on, looking down in the bunker <laughs> with the boys from Nissan Motorsport as the two brothers are in sixth and seventh position on board now with Todd. Can he fire down the inside? In fact, I think Rick at some stage will be nice to him. Will he? Maybe not. Here we go. Yep. yep. So like, you, you asked and then answered your own question. And uh, so that was a clean move for Todd Kelly. Now, one and a half seconds is the gap between the Kellys, plural, and Van Gisbergen. So whilst they were fumbling each other, uh, that allowed the Red Bull car that you can now see on the left-hand side of screen to get much, much closer. So he's all over the back now of Rick Kelly. This is very important. This potentially moves him up to seventh if he can claim the spot. Shane Van Gisbergen trying to zone in on a Supercars Championship. Van Gisbergen was fastest of all cars on the previous lap. Much younger tyres also uh, on the Shane Van Gisbergen car relative to Rick Kelly, so that should serve him pretty well. You can see how much ground he made under brakes into turn nine. And so if he can't get it done in any of these final second gear corners, he'll most certainly be in a position to have a crack down at turn one, Shane Van Gisbergen. So this is 11. You can see the little slide from the Singlet Nissan there for Rick Kelly coming up to the final corner. Corner now, a clean exit for Shane here is what he's looking to get that 100% throttle in early. Rick actually got a very good exit off the corner, and so Shane will be thinking now as the shadows drop into turn one, is there a gap down here? Not close enough. In fact, the drive of the Nissan out of turn 13 then was outstanding. Very impressive. Now he's a little bit closer, but this is a very difficult corner to pass on at turn two. Diminishing returns here. He offers up the nose, but if you get down there the only way you can make a pass move at turn two in your favor is to be fully alongside the car that you're racing you can't just half get up the inside there and expect it to work out so the next spot for SVG is into turn nine so this is now turn seven up the hill to Dawn Fraser Avenue difficult exit for Shane Van Gisbergen here to get a run on Rick Kelly and then turn nine's the spot. This is the probably the best passing position on the whole of the track. He just gets himself into... But risky because yes. it's really easy to lock a break here. But he fires it down the inside and Rick offers no resistance. So he diagonaled it to the corner. That was the clean move. He wanted to pull on Mark Winterbottom early in the race and didn't. That's another important step in the process of trying to close out a championship here. Rustin behind the guys in the bunker. Stalking them. Stalking, exactly. he have been sold a pup on those tyres before. He's still angry about it, I'm sure. I'm with Mark Dutton, and I'm just sort of contemplating the potential Triple Eight dilemma here because Craig Lowndes is in his own battle for third in the championship, and SVG is getting ever so closer. How do you play this? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we let them sort it out the track. That's the only way to play it, isn't it? Um, it's not ideal, but uh, they've all had good pace. So, you know, we're still, uh, you know, Shane's picking people off. Hopefully uh, Craig can get Scotty. That's that's the goal. And uh, Jamie's driven positively. So, uh, yeah, he deserves to be up there. So it's, yeah, it's, it's tough. Well done, too, by the way. Those mixed sets of tyres before absolutely threw me off. Nice play. Thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Dotto's quite proud of that. Yeah, so, look at those couches. See his big smile. So it's 137 points in favour right now as a result of that last move for Shane Van Gisbergen. He's got to get to 150 points or better to claim the championship over Wincup, who leads the race. And the next guy in the battle, as we look at Lee Holdsworth down the inside of Jason Bright at turn eight with Tim Blanchard behind. Bright is going to offer up another bit of resistance down the inside here. Is Todd Kelly, and both Todd and Shane Van Gisbergen's tyres are exactly the same age. So Todd will be a harder play than Rick was. It won't be as easy to claim a position over car number, se uh, car number seven. And Todd Kelly, he's got genuine pace. He did a 28.01 to match James Courtney's fastest time. That was on the previous lap. 
So Todd Kelly has genuinely, at this point, got a car that's very good and behaving very well. In fact, he's closed the gap to Lowndes by a long way. 0.4 of a second officially to Lowndes. So they're enjoying the humour down at Red Bull Racing Australia. So they know that uh, they managed to sell Rusty the unsaleable there. So, uh, Rusty, after the race today, we'll help you go down there and square up with them. But uh, we must say, uh, while a rare moment of pause in the business, that the cooperation that we get from all of the teams, all of the senior engineers, mechanics, team owners up and down the lane, we appreciate during the year. They give us tremendous access that many other categories around the world do not. They bring us into their inner sanctum and uh, we have a great relationship with them. And so thanks to all of the key personnel up and down the lane for their assistance. Now, this is a juicy battle. This one's a beauty. We're riding with Todd Kelly and Shane Van Gisbergen. He's just done the fastest first sector of the entire afternoon on this lap and a personal best in the second sector. And look at Todd. He is monstering the back of Craig Lowndes at the moment. So Todd Kelly's not worried at all about Shane Van Gisbergen. All of his focus at the moment is on Craig Lowndes. So the way Kelly looks at the moment, he could well have a crack at Lowndes on the run to turn one. So this is an impressive run, isn't it? So uh, Lowndes has got tyres that are older than Todd Kelly by about 10 laps. So that'll be a telling part of the story here. Todd Kelly, his best finish all season is a sixth in Adelaide at our first round. So Todd in a position now to put pressure on Craig Lowndes for fifth. So Winkup, Tanda, Courtney, McLaughlin, Lowndes, Kelly, Van Gisbergen who's fighting back, who's just done, as you said, the fastest lap of the race, a 27.98 new lap record. And Rick Kelly, eighth, Will Davis in ninth. Davey Reynolds has done a great job from the back of the field to be tenth. The shadows on the racetrack are assisting the group and therefore the lap speed because Winkup has also just done his personal best in the first sector. He's just done his personal best lap on the previous lap as well. It was a couple of tenths shy, a couple of hundredths shy of what Van Gisbergen did, I beg your pardon. So Shane did a 127.98. Jamie did a 128.03. So they're both quick out there at the moment. You can see in different locations around the track at the moment, starting to throw shadows here and there. Uh, we're coming up to just after 26 minutes past five o'clock local time in Sydney. So they're contemplating what we're talking about. That's uh, Ken Douglas on the extreme right, who's working in the strategy group at Team Vortex. Andrew Simpson on the left, an Irish in there as well, the engineer, the new engineer for Craig Lowndes. So they're trying to work out what it all means. They know that they are battling with older rubber than Todd Kelly. And meantime, Van Gisbergen now has reeled Todd Kelly in. So Todd's got it going in both directions. He's trying to climb over the top of Craig Lowndes and he's going to have to defend from an aggressive Shane Van Gisbergen who's got the fastest car on the racetrack. The reason this matters so much is if he gets these two spots, he wins the championship to yes. 152 points. So right now, 137. You get to 143 and if he gets Lowndes, he wins the championship today. A life-changing moment for the young New Zealander. Not since Jim Richards in 1991 have we seen a Kiwi win our national championship. So do you play it all or nothing? Do you Pass it. Round him up. There you go. And now look at Kelly down the inside of Lowndes. It's awkward. He's not quite there yet. They run side by side. And now have a look at Van Gisbergen. He takes advantage of this. So there's one of the key moves. And this is going to be a big part of the championship story. And Todd Kelly fights on the outside into the wall. So Todd Kelly makes a mistake on the dirty side of the road. Heartbreak. That was his new engineer, Blake Smith, in the background. What a shame. He grabs reverse and gets on with it. But Van Gisbergen's gone up a spot. He's now in sixth. Make that fifth. fifth. Wow, it's going on all around the racetrack. So Lowndes okay, gives him mate. space. Help Craig by getting Scotty. Good job. So that is the move of the year. That move has got Shane Van Gisbergen to 152 points clear of Jamie Winkup.
There's only 150 points remaining tomorrow for the final race of our 2016 season. And Grant McPherson, Mark Dutton, David Couchy all looking on. But that little smirk from Grant McPherson tells a very long and epic story of this season battle that we've seen. One of the most historic teammate rivalries. And there you go, there's the number, 152. I didn't think it was possible. Based on what happened really early in the race, getting swallowed by that traffic off the start, then the penalty, going to the rear, and then the climb back just goes to show how unpredictable the game can be. And it's not done till it's done. And it's still not. We've still got 10 laps remaining, so anything's possible here at the moment. But this has been a big storm back, aided by the safety car and fresh tyres for Shane Van Gisbergen. And how was that for a last lap? When all of a sudden Todd Kelly and Craig Lowndes in a vigorous battle have all of their own stuff going on and Van Gisbergen clears them. And you've got to feel for Todd Kelly. He's back at 17th now after this mistake. So he got down the inside, not quite far enough. And he goes around the outside with Craig Lowndes. Nice race craft. A crisscross manoeuvre then for Van Gisbergen. And in the braking area, for turn 11, he's on the outside of the dirty line, outside the clean line, and into the tyres goes Todd Kelly. He was battling for fifth position, his best result of the season. This is now the front shot. Train station's on the right-hand side. Breaks it, battles the stop, too much understeer, and basically runs headlong into the tyre bundle. Yeah, the grey out there has no grip. Here's the onboard. So Lowndes in the Vortex car. And here's where it got clumsy for him. And then that allowed Van Gisbergen at turn 10 to get a much better exit. And then trying to stay on the outside, here's the drama. Listen. He'll be filthy with himself. So you come out of the ideal line here. Blake Smith is his engineer on the right third engineer for the year and that's been a good partnership so far this weekend and you can see the disappointment for Blake. The replay shows how effective Van Gisbergen was coming out of turn 10 and then hanging it in there on the outside here. Look, it just didn't turn. Grey line, bang. Now the other point that's worth making here is that the immediate decision when things went pear-shaped for Van Gisbergen made by Grant McPherson, really early in the day, we're just going to run long. We heard it on the radio. Running long is what's helped the cause here to give him the opportunity to make those fresh tyres work at the back end of the day. For sure. That's in the heat of the battle. Great thinking on your feet. That's the move there that Ben Gisbergen gets by Craig Lowndes for on track fifth. Did he rub the wall? He did. Shame. A just little, a little. A little rub. And... Uh, see that Jason Bright's also got a bad sportsmanship flag for getting a bit racy down at turn three and climbing up over the curb too much. There's a timing loop down there and all Shea Davies gets on to the marbles on the outside there of turn five as well and gives the wall a pretty hefty rub. So Wing Cup leads. Tanda and Courtney have done a great job for Holden Racing Team. Remembering it's the last weekend of the Holden Racing Team Eight arrangement. Two, the car behind. Eight laps to go, mate. Side forward. After being the factory team since 1990. So a very emotional weekend for these guys. What I just wanted to quickly capture was the reaction from the Nissan guys when this happened. And you see the boys, that to me is a really emphatic aspect of the real teamwork, the energy and the today what was going to be a great result for Todd Kelly he was he had genuine car pace Neil now one of the things that's happening here is that Shane Van Gisbergen has got his mojo back because with those young tires on the car he is catching Scotty McLaughlin hand over fist out there at the moment he is blazing it's one of the reasons why we were still huffing and puffing about what happened with Todd Kelly when he rounded up Craig Lowndes but it's not done yet he is marching onto the back of McLaughlin at an incredible rate of knots at the moment. So he's provisionally in a position at the moment to go to bed tonight with sufficient cushion to round up the championship officially tomorrow. But right now, he's back to full spec. He's into it. So I'm early in the off. day, he was a plug lead off. Yeah. Now he's on eight cylinders again.
but it's the way he drives, isn't it? I mean, under most circumstances now, he'd be told to back it off. Previous lap was his fastest lap, and he now, with all the team there watching on intently, he now has to make sure that there's no small error, no mistakes for the last well, remaining laps. The last several laps, he's been the fastest car on the track. McLaughlin third fastest, Wind Cup second fastest, but Courtney, who's third, was 10th fastest on the last lap. So there's a little bit to play out here with six to go. It's starting to brew up. It never, ever fails to deliver the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship. There's always something to talk about, some controversy, a moment, a passing move, some spectacular driving. There's the team owner, Roland Dane, in the foreground from Holden is Simon McNamara. And it's going to be potentially a very big moment for this young Kiwi today. Now their drivers are in the top 10. Win Cup, Van Gisbergen and Lowndes. They're one, five and six. But the way in which Van Gisbergen's blazing at the moment, that might change. Sometimes it's better to keep on pressing on. You make less mistakes when you're driving the car at 100%. So although it's nice to, to say, come on, mate, slow down, you don't need to take any risks, sometimes when you slow down, you make more mistakes. So it's a weird thing in this game, and this place is such an unforgiving layout. The smallest mistake, you make the fence. Now, in the battle between McLaughlin and Lowndes for third position, there's three points in it now between McLaughlin and Lowndes. So again, very important for the teams and in terms of the team's championships and the way that those guys have battled season long. It's 21 points this morning, currently three points. This is a vigorous battle as well. Angry Pack, they're all battling just outside the top 10. So Reynolds, bear in mind, was rear of field early in the day. He's up to 10th. What a mighty performance for him and the boys and girls at Penrite and Erebus Motorsport for that performance. Chaz Mostert on screen here is in 12th. He's behind Fabian Coulthard. And that was Reynolds right there in the black and gold holding Commodore. So that is a tremendous performance. And you mentioned that a little bit early in the day. Up 16 spots. He was absolute stone motherless last off the grid. Having qualified in 7th. A little infringement earlier in the day, unfortunately, met an automatic penalty to the rear of the field. In the meantime, Van Gisbergen is 0.8 of a second now behind McLaughlin. 0.8 of a second. So he's storming home. So these fellas here, it's Reynolds in 10th, Coulthard, Mostert, Caruso, then Pye, and there's the gap. Now, Courtney has still got a bit of a battle on his hands. He picked up his pace in the last lap to be the sixth fastest, but it was Tander, his teammate, who's second at the moment, who actually slipped down the pace order slightly. But all of them are coming under attack from Van Gisbergen. I don't expect that he's going to do anything heroic at the back end of it, but he is cracking on there at the moment. So I'm just looking at the computer timing here again, and once again, on the last lap, he was the fastest car of the key cars. Oh, McLaughlin was second fast on that lap, and he made a really good gain on Courtney at turn one. Courtney missed the apex a little bit. Scott turned it in beautifully, made the apex, got a nice run up to turn two. As we've said before, very hard to make a over overtaking manoeuvre stick there, but he's got a beautiful run also out of turn four. Car looks good. So Courtney's struggling. Now, what Shane doesn't need is a drama between Courtney and McLaughlin in front of him. If these two guys make contact and have any sort of incident, Shane's very close to it. He doesn't need to get caught up in that. Nice run off the corner there for James Courtney. A little bit of a slide, but good exit. And the stakes are high for Scotty. Passing James Courtney puts him third in the championship. So he's got his own headaches to worry about at the moment. And there's a team's championship battle between Holden Racing Team and Gary Rogers Motorsport. So lots of background information. And, and without all the permutations, position always matters. It matters to every one of the boys and girls in every one of these teams, and especially the drivers, because the results are key. That's what sustains you in this business. So they'll fight for a podium all day long regardless. Look how tight this is. It's 3.6 seconds, first to second between Wincup and Tander. 
and then it's Tander Courtney McLaughlin Van Gisberg and we're looking at them from the coat tire chopper can down to turn one and Gizzy got a good run he's got a very good run he's up the inside of the Volvo he'll make this stick from here he's well down the inside what a recovery from Shane Van Gisbergen done before they got to turn two he is on the march that's up to four he might grab a podium the way things are going. Absolutely, and he's got great pace over James Courtney. Remember, after the infringement, the pit lane penalty, he was 22nd. What a great drive. I honestly did not think he could come back from that. So this has been an amazing oh. run, and Courtney's going to chase him across the road. He will not surrender James Courtney. And it's a very good exit by Van Gisberg, and this sets up a braking run down the inside. It's up to you. Yeah. No risk. We're home. <laughs> and so that would have been Roland tapping Grant McPherson on the shoulder to go, make sure we manage this properly. There he is. They're holding their breath at Red Bull. So they don't want to end up in cars yeah, spread all over the road. There, That's good advice. That's very good guidance by Grant McPherson. No risk with this bloke, mate. These drivers play for keeps. And it's all about risk versus reward. That, that position right there, that looks perfect to me, mate. Three to go. On the left is Terry Engineering, James Courtney. Alex Somerset on the right in the HRT box is Engineering, Garth Tander. Bear in mind, he's on for a great podium today, Garth Tander. Farewell weekend for him. Another good exit out of turn one for Van Gisbergen, but Courtney got away well from there as well. Not burning up the right rear tyre too much on the exit. And so, if it's easy, Van Gisbergen, I expect, will have a crack. But based on the body language from James Courtney there, he was more than willing to take it to the brink. More than willing. And only a couple of laps remaining, so he'll be looking for a podium for HRT. So this is the spot in the previous lap. Now, this actually is going to compromise Courtney's exit. He turned it in narrow, and Shane has got a beautiful exit now down Dawn Fraser Avenue. This is down to turn nine. Courtney moves it over to cover. This is playing for keep stuff. Van Gisbergen needs to be very careful here because he can end the whole thing. A little bit of contact, a little bump at turn 10. It's on. He's chasing him across the road. This is wild stuff. Wild stuff from Courtney, who is not surrendering. Grant McPherson will be purple in the face. Down to the last corner at turn 13. Van Gisbergen wants a decent exit because he's under threat now from McLaughlin. They are playing hardball. Two balls, two balls. Bring it home. Look at him. <laughs> Bring it home is the key message. Look at Mark Dutton too. Look at the big goal. Great exit. Great exit for Van Gisbergen. And he'll have another look. But James Courtney will chase him. He moves it straight across in front of him. Win Cup is the leader. He's got 4.3 seconds over Tander. Unfortunately for Garth, we're not looking at what's been a mighty drive because this is the focus. Courtney Van Gisbergen and McLaughlin. Right now, Shane Van Gisbergen, provisional Virgin Australia Supercars champion of 2016. They cross up over the curbs. He's going to fire it down the inside of eight, and Shane does it. He's cleared him, but it's not done. It's not done. It's not done at all because the crisscross for Courtney, he gets down the inside. This is a very difficult braking zone at turn nine, and Courtney gets the spot back. This is great stuff, great driving by those guys. McLaughlin now parked right in behind. Van Gisbergen thought he got it seconds, done. Nine seconds back to six. If you want to drop them behind both of these guys, it's OK. Full flavour supercar racing at its best. The best guys in the best cars in the best teams duking it out to the very end. We've got one lap remaining for race 28 with another big race tomorrow. And this is the battle for the last spot on the podium. Courtney giving it all. Van Gisbergen on the outside. He's escorting him all over the road at the moment. He, he gets him. him, he gets him. And Shane Van Gisbergen is on the podium. What an afternoon of racing. And a nice move by McLaughlin also. So he's capitalised on the little mistake that James Courtney has made. Shane Van Gisbergen did not give up. 
He intimidated. He used every bit of racecraft that he's learned across his career. This is a career-defining day for Shane Van Gisbergen. The winner of the race today, who's done everything correctly, is going to be Jamie Wincup. Second, Garth Tander, who's done everything right as well. But the story of the day, the story of the year, is Shane Van Gisbergen. We're looking at Wincup. Wincup's going to win it. What a great performance from him. He needed to win. That's what he's done. Here's the man. It's been a roller coaster today. He was a champion in karting, in motocross, in Formula First, in Formula Ford, in Toyota Racing Series. He was spotted by Ross and Jimmy Stone. He's in eight talents recognised. Win Cup's the winner. But Shane Van Gisbergen, 10 years in the making and 301 supercar races before this one. Great job, great job, John. He is the provisional supercars champion. 2016, and it's just a formality tomorrow. Thank you, thank you so much. Sorry, I landed with there, but you got it done. Great recovery, mate. That is brilliant. Awesome stuff. Thank you. Kenny Mack, that was huge. You've got to remember, this guy's been trying to win some championships with other teams as well. Provisionally, you've done it. You've got tears in your eyes, Graham McPherson. Shippy, what does this mean? That is the most incredible professional feeling this is so much but this is so cool this is what we work so bloody hard for i'm going to go and enjoy it with the crew mate you do, you do. <laughs> well done isn't that wonderful to see so he was a raw teenager when he turned up at Ora park in the team kiwi car at 2007. you could barely drag a word out of him so he's worked incredibly hard there was the controversial exit from stone brothers racing at the end of 2012 he was steadied by Steve Hallam at Techno Autosports for the last three years. He's shown extreme talent levels. He could have won at Mount Panorama in 2014 in other circumstances. He cleaned up the 12 hour earlier this year. He was a winner in Europe. A decade in the making of all the highs and lows. His teammate got the job done today. That's his dad, Robert, with Mark Dutton. And today, Shane Van Gisbergen becomes the Virgin Australia Supercars Champion of 2016. And what a moment for everybody associated with Triple Eight Racing. We said at the start of the year, could they run three cars well? The answer to that is absolutely. What a superb drive by Winkup today, and what a superb awesome. battle. One of the most historic teammate rivalries we've seen. And through the course of the season, from Sandown on, Shane Van Gisbergen has been able to get a little gap on Jamie Winkup, and today to come back from 22nd to get onto the podium. Genuine car speed, superb drive. The first New Zealander since Jim Richards in 1991 to win our national championship. Great story great comeback would not have thought that were possible i could have lost the house on that one earlier in the day but the safety car the running long on the strategy and the young tires at the end the team effort the pit lane acknowledges <laughs> team owner roland dane this will be a big moment in the virgin australia victory lane special word for garth tander today that was a mighty drive so GT, in his second last drive for the Holden Racing Team, goes out on a real high. And what do you say about Jamie Wincup? The requirement was go and win the race. Box ticked. And he did. And he did. Brilliant performance. But the spotlight is squarely on his teammate today. And an incredible performance when you stop and think about the success that he's had at this racetrack. Came here with five wins. He's added to that been the most successful guy in the last nine starts at this location with a ridiculous record in the championship having generated six of them and now it's about this man <laughs> and that relationship with Grant McPherson this year and the way that Grant and the team have been able to guide Shane Van Gisbergen through the intensity in this rivalry with within the team has just been fantastic it's been great for Shane his level of consistency has been superb And I said it before, I'm not playing it down, this is a career-defining day.
for Shane Van Gisbergen, his first championship win. Jamie Winkup, congratulations, P1 today. You did everything you possibly could to get yeah. the job done, but you got the race win. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we, we give it up to you all like we have uh, all year. Um, big congratulations to Shane and all the 97 crew. Um, the winner of the championship is the most consistent. They've been the most consistent. Uh, not quite our year, but I um, hope everyone enjoyed the battle and looking forward to doing it all again next year. It hasn't been that bad. You've been your second in the championship. It's been a pretty good year. It's not all doom and gloom. No, no I'm obviously, I've had a great year. We just uh, absolutely got hammered um, with points on, on, in some crucial times, but um, it's been a good battle. Not taking anything away from uh, Car 97. They did an awesome job. Still another day tomorrow. Congratulations, Jamie Winkup. Garth Tander, your final weekend with the Holden Racing Team, and what a day you've had today. Yeah, yeah, car was really good. I completely stuffed the start up. It's my worst start of the year. Um, but then the car was fast, and the guys did a good job of strategy, keeping me in clear air while we had a fast car, so we could jump them all at the last stop. And, um, yeah, yeah, really happy to come out there um, in second, and I knew I wasn't going to be able to go with Jamie after that last restart, so I was just going get away from JC and then just sit there and cruise around. So the last 20 laps were quite boring, but um, hey, second, we'll take that. Enjoy the celebrations on the podium. Shane Van Gisbergen, yeah. we, the commentator myself, I think most people nearly wrote you off after the incident at the start of the race, but you fought back yeah. and we can now say that you're champion-elect for 2016. Pretty, pretty amazing feeling. Sorry to Mark, I went up the inside and just didn't commit. As soon as I went up the inside, I thought, oh, you pussy, I didn't go in hard enough and it was his right to turn in my fault, but... um. Yeah, awesome car to come through like that. A lucky safety car, but good racing. Big battle with James and Scotty at the end. But, um, yeah, what an amazing year. Thanks to everyone, uh, all our sponsors, Red Bull, Holden, O'Brien, Komatsu, and, and all the rest. It's a pretty awesome day. I know there's still one more day to go tomorrow, but right now, what, what's, what's your feelings, your emotions, what's going through your head? I just want to do a burnout, but we'll do that tomorrow. <laughs> all right, thanks, Shane. Enjoy the podium. All right, thank you. Well, uh, someone who had an amazing view of everything that was going on with Shane Van Gisbergen there. Uh, the massive fight, mate. I mean, you, Shane Van Gisbergen, have you heard of him? Oh, no, I thought you were saying that I was Shane Van Gisbergen. No, no, oh, I know who you are, you idiot. Say, uh, um, listen, mate, you had a great view of what was going on there. What were you thinking at the time? Uh, first, first of all, congrats to Shane. Uh, awesome, he's had an awesome year, but holy crap, that was all on. That was so much fun, and, uh, and uh, yeah, I just, uh, I, I knew that Shane was faster than me, so I didn't make it too hard for him, let him go, and then he could attack Courtney more, and eventually we got Courtney, and I heard it lounges back a little bit, so it's good for our championship, but man, that was so much fun, that's why we go racing. That's why we go racing, you seven points up on Lounsey, so you've managed to turn that 21 around into a seven-point gain, and uh, at the moment you're sitting in the championship, so that's awesome, a great drive, mate. Thank you, yeah, and uh, yeah, thanks to everyone at Wilson Security GRM, I think we've got a great car for tomorrow, but... Uh, yeah, look, it's going to be whoever beats each other in the next one, which is, you know, what racing's all about. So it's going to be good. Qualifying will be good tomorrow. Yeah, bloody oath. Cheers. Brilliant performance, Scotty McLaughlin. How's that for a slow-mo replay of that thing up on two wheels? And what a gorgeous day in Sydney. And Sydney Olympic Park has delivered for us once again. Here's the results. Jamie Wincup, the winner, by just under seven seconds from Garth Tander. I just... I'm bewildered that Shane Van Gisbergen was able to get back on the podium. That is a brilliant result and seals the championship in that deal. Scotty McLaughlin, interesting that Craig Lowndes in the last couple of laps just dropped down to eight. And so clearly an issue there. They were older tyres on that car than a couple of the guys that he was racing. But that was a brilliant afternoon's motorsport. I hope you really enjoyed that one. Wow, what a big day. Lots of stories to tell. And don't forget, there's tons more of this to come tomorrow. Another 250 Ks, plenty of things still to play out. One or two tough stories along the way, including Dale Wood and Chris Pither. So unbelievable performance. The other story here, because of the performance of Scotty McLaughlin, uh, and we're going to watch his progress next year with Dick Johnson Racing Team Penske. He's now clearly moved up into third in the championship as a result of what happened to Craig Lowndes. Beautiful shot looking from the west back towards the CBD to the Harbour Bridge, Sydney Harbour, the Opera House, and uh, north and south head little bit of haze down there at the moment we started the day out very cloudy and quite cool and broke out in sunshine this afternoon and dropped the spotlight on what's been a brilliant afternoon of racing 74 laps 250 k's there was a lexus rcf safety car intervention which was true to form at this location eighth and final visit at sydney olympic park this weekend and a day that has delivered a magnificent podium result for shane van gisbergen and in that process an incredible slip the noose recovery to get back on top of this championship and claim it for 2016. So very shortly we'll go down for the official ceremony for our podium for race number 28 of the championship. 
We've now had just under 6,500 kilometres of racing in 2016. At 28th of 29 races in this championship year. A year filled with variety. A whole bunch of different drivers have been able to put together wins, including Shane Van Gisbergen, who moves that tally on to eight now. And his team, Triple Eight, what a performance. They move on to 41 podiums in total in 2016. They've had an impressive run. And clearly there's more to play out tomorrow in that battle between Craig Lowndes and Scotty McLaughlin. Team owner Roland Dane there in conversation with Robert Van Gisbergen. Mark Dutton in the foreground. Smiles on their faces and they're about to celebrate a big podium moment. What an afternoon at Sydney Olympic Park. It is time for the 2016 Virgin Australia Supercars Championship Coates Hire Sydney 500 podium. In first place this afternoon, representing Red Bull Racing Australia, Jamie Windcup. A podium on his farewell weekend with the famous Red Squad from the Holden Racing Team. Second today, Garth Tander. And it was the drive of a champion. A very special day for our third place driver from Red Bull Racing. Put your hands together for Shane Van Gisbergen. Provisional champion for 2016, representing the Castrol Edge winning team. Special moment for this guy too, Grant McPherson. Now to present our trophies for race 28 of the season. Third place to be delivered by Melanie Haynes, part of the Virgin Australia cabin crew. Our second place trophy to be awarded by the CEO of MTAA Super, Leanne Turner. The Castrol Edge winning team award comes from someone who's part of the family here in Pit Lane, the sponsorship and PR manager at Castrol, Sue Dilger. And our first place trophy this afternoon from the group manager marketing from our naming rights sponsor of the event, Coates Hire, Elias Latfula. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Race 28 Virgin Australia Supercars Championship podium for 2016, the Coates Hire Sydney 500. What a mega moment for each of those drivers and especially for Shane Van Gisbergen. And there's the point scenario. With one race to come and another 150 points available tomorrow, we talked a lot about requiring a margin of more than 150 points between Shane Van Gisbergen and Jamie Wincup when Shane put himself to sleep tonight. He's done it. And he cleared that margin by more than 20 points. And how's the gap between McLaughlin and Lowndes? It's just nine points between them heading into tomorrow. That sets up an awesome battle. Highlights time now. Where do you start? There's a lot to talk about in race number 28, the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship. And from the very moment that the lights changed, it was on. And for Shane Van Gisbergen, an ordinary start. Win Cup was mega off the line. So was Tander and Courtney. So was Craig Lowndes and Scotty McLaughlin. Unfortunately, in the first lap, though, a tough deal for Chris Pither, who got rotated and big damage and had to park the car. A bad decision to fire down the inside by Shane Van Gisbergen meant that he tagged Mark Winterbottom. And you can see that for Grant McPherson, real trouble for those guys because it turned into a pit lane drive through penalty. So heartbreak for them. And we thought at that stage, and certainly I did, that he was out of business. Now, McLaughlin has been very, very fast this afternoon. Great strategy from the group at Gary Rogers. But the long run for Shane Van Gisbergen and the fresh tyres at the end put him in an unbelievably strong position. We saw some incredible racing for the Miners. And this was mega between Craig Lowndes and Todd Kelly with Van Gisbergen, the watching brief, and then Todd's tried to stay around the outside of Turn 11, found the grey, got into the wall down there. And then while we were still gasping at what had happened, Shane Van Gisbergen with the younger tyres gets down the inside at turn one on his teammate Craig Lowndes. And then this left us breathless. This amazing battle between Shane Van Gisbergen, James Courtney and Scott McLaughlin playing not only for a championship victory but sorting out the minors as well. Courtney wouldn't have a bar of letting anybody go through easily. 
So Jamie Wincup wins the race today. An incredible performance. He needed to do it. That's exactly what he did. But the focus was all about Red Bull Racing Australia and the mega performance from Shane Van Gisbergen, our champion in 2016.